Welcome everybody. This is the free uh, the free show is like the it's like if you come at the brewery for the scrum beer and uh, you just get in and you take your beer, you open your beer and you relax and you chill with that amazing Mallorca Ibiza music from DJ Kuyoi. You can find the family key K I U on Instagram and YouTube. This is very nice, a non-copyright sound provided by uh, this community of Keep It On The Ground, live from Ibiza, España. So relax, just get in slowly. For those on Zoom, uh, remember uh, to look at your email for the, the code. And we'll start Scrum Sharp on time at 5 p.m. So right now, just get ready, get your beer from Far Region or what have you, open it relax under the sun maybe on your terrace and be ready to have the pickle apps as well so your coach af facilitator will be with you so just enjoy this uh, pre online forum agile forum our oh, agility business agility conscious agility will actually help us going through this crisis that we all in it together and once we go on we go all to find solution creatively, openly, for a smarter world. Yes, smarter, more than better. See you soon, guys. Enjoy the waiting moment with, again, the KIU family, the best music from Ibiza. Alright, alright, Agile Loungers, Business Agilist, Lean Thinker, how are you today? Are you ready to rumble with the second Agile, online Agile Forum? To answer great question creatively with Pickles apps and your brain and your capacity and responsibility to move people to a smarter world of work and beyond. Mr. Chris Ben, let me lower the music. How is Mr. Pickle doing today? Mr. Pickles is doing well. Oh, you, just push a, you see, I've got a rainbow, me too. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good. I like it. Yeah, I'll talk to you about it later. It's my marketing coach who insisted. And anyways. oh, really? So we're already live on Facebook. Uh, now I noticed YouTube. that. I got to uh, watch what I say already. Yes, that's why I told you. <laughs> yeah. No, I really don't like my feedback, man. It's 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 it. I I I hear myself back on the on the headphone, like mm. I am. Uh, hold on a second. Maybe that's. Uh, I'll, I'll be back. Okay. Hmm. Was there uh... uh now it's better. You know, this these headsets are old headsets when I was a DJ back in Ibiza. <laughs> so they are since 1997. They are wow. still amazing, but sometimes is the cable is just next to another cable. Mm -hmm. I got something weird. So I see you on Facebook. Hello. What, what kind of uh, what kind of music were you spinning at Ibiza in '97? In '97, techno trends, okay. dark trends, yeah, things any like that. Any artists? Any artists that I would have heard of are still alive? Uh, on the trend side, uh, probably uh, Giovanni Ottanavio, John Digwig, John Digwig. Digwig. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I'm. I mean. Yeah. Uh, even sense, even sense with bedrock. Like Actually, like bedrock. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. I've got, I've got someone named Owner. Let me see who is it. Welcome, Owner. Ah. Uh, I don't think he's in here yet. Oh, there you go. Welcome, oh. Owner. What's your name, please? Yeah, I'm going to uh, run and grab some water real quick. No problem. We still have four minutes. All right. Okay. Welcome, owner. Who is this? Yeah, I'm changing the name now. <laughs> okay. Is it John? Yes, it is. It is. How are you, John? Yeah, I'm the owner of my machine, so... <laughs> in case any yeah sometimes i see a iphone 67 19 or android uh, stuff like this but it's okay yeah so mr mr delis is coming up too all right how are you how's montreal doing today very beautiful it's uh it's amazing sunny a bit colder than uh what expected for may 13th though but uh and you're in virginia right Yes, but I was in Montreal last year, May 18th, and it was still cold, and there were no leaves on the trees. So, I think ah. it's, I think it's uh, normal. C'est normal. So, <laughs> were you with us for the uh, Agile Alliance? Um, what was the A name of it? Like XP conference? XP. Yes. Yeah, he was there for the XP conference. Hey. Yes, yeah, so John. How are you doing? Yeah, I was going to say Kali <laughs> something, but I, I don't remember the Kali. Yeah. Cal Calimera, Calispera. Calimera, that's it. Bonjour, All right, bonsoir, so bon appétit, right? This, this, back, this back like you have, John, is killing me, man. It's like you're like a ghost. You really? Wait for me. <laughs> right now, I'm just putting the screen right now for the people on YouTube. There's a rule of thumb. You never put backlight in the back. You always face the light. So the, the way the light comes yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I used to have a, uh, this is a good backdrop for, for one of those screens. I could, hold on. Uh, let me fix that right now. I'm going to fix that for you. Give me a second. Uh, and yeah, you can put like a virtual background like I have or something. Hold on. I'm going to fix you up. A little I video should, slideshow put... like me also, as you could see. I, I'm going yeah, to yeah. fix fix it up right now. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to give so you guys, my let me, real let me open the YouTube streaming right now. And, uh, yes. I'll be right. Yeah, there's my virtual background I should use. <laughs> yeah, just uh, here it goes. Come on. Hello, YouTube subscriber of the Agile Lounge. Welcome, welcome. We're going to start the online Agile Forum in a bit at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, as promised. Scrum time, scrum sharp. So again, guys, for you on YouTube, if you'd like to participate and see the whole thing with my panelists, go to the link I put in the chat on the Facebook watch party. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm a host and facilitator at the same time, you know. So, 
so this I'm is why I'm, this having is my, not... I'm having my this is my nice Greek coffee. <laughs> really? And, uh. and see what I just received, uh, Michael, today. Ah, uh, scrum beer. The scrum beer mug. Right. Very soon on sale on my website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to monetize. No, because see that, John. We're not even. We're not even a minute in. He's already doing marketing. <laughs> the thing. That's the thing. Like, like the rainbow behind oh, yeah. me. It's my. It's my marketing coach who says, like, uh, oh, you have to do the rainbow thing. Okay, so let's let's do this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We have the uh, creator coach here. Welcome, Will. Will from Draw Me a City. Sounds I good. hope this time he has a better uh, connection. Welcome, Will. And Sepe. I don't know who's Sepe. We'll see. <laughs> I hope it's someone we expect. Is the music in the background too loud, guys? Or no, no it's not too bad. Okay, let me know. Huh? You are my uh, regisseur today, so if uh... how's the weather down in Virginia, John? Uh, it's getting warmer. It's supposed to get real hot by the end of the week. Well, John is there. Will is there. Sepe. Who is Sepe? Uh, I work for PMC. Um, uh, Michael is one of my boss. Hi, oh, Michael. Well, uh, it's, uh, oh, okay. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Sefer, though. Is yeah. that it? Wait. Is that pronounced well? Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So let me see. Someone is texting me. It's a pair if have... you want, because uh, uh, if you want to be more if on the panel or you can be an observer, like Benoit said, he's going to be an observer, but it's up to you. You want to stay on the panel? I'll be an observer welcome. too, if it's okay. I'll be an okay. observer. Too. Thanks. Let me shut down my phone here, guys. So it'll be okay. Leonardo. Benvenida, Leonardo. Le Leo Leandro, sorry. Disculpe. Okay. Oh, no problem. Now I'm not mute. Yeah. How are you? Good. And you? Good. Are you in Montreal right now? Yeah, I'm in Montreal. And by the way, do you live in Griffintown? Uh, no, I work in Griffintown sometimes. I work everywhere, actually. Phoenix, New York, Austin, and, and Griffintown, okay. yes. I think you I saw you around, around here uh, this pro weekend. Probably. I, was, uh, I went to the Crew Collective, where is my office for Montreal. I want to grab oh, something okay. because they kind of, they're not reopened yet, but yeah, we kind of did this. So. They, they, they have very good coffee there. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I miss going there. So sure. I just don't know who texts me to be, I uh, say he's going to be late. So as a good scrum master or a great scrum master, should I say, I will say like, no problem, just run, but I don't know who it is. So, uh, and I call... so, oh. so Michael, you like the background now? Oh, there you go, Navaggio. That's, in, that's, uh, it. <laughs> that's it. That's in Zaki, though. That's Very it. Nice. Hey, look at that. But now we don't see you at all. Now you're like a... I don't like, you, you've got like a filter on you. It's like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this thing did here, but normally it's not like that. But All know. right, all right. Welcome, everybody. I fix it. I think we're missing two people. We're gonna leave them like till 5.05, you agree? I agree with that. Things like that, yeah. and uh, let me just see. Anna, are you on the uh, Facebook desk for us? Thank you. I like that little background music, AF. Like... Thank you, it's really actually from a, gr a great family of mine in Ibiza, <laughs> in Ibiza. Ibiza. You have to pronounce yes. Leandro, diga, yeah. tell him how to, it's Ibiza. Ibiza. I'm not sure because I'm a Portuguese speaker. So ah, okay. I say Ibiza yeah. as well. Okay. I'm not sure Ibiza. if it's right. Okay, how do you say Mallorca, Michael? How do you say Mallorca? I think you said it pretty well. I don't know because some uh, Spaniard in Spain, they they sometimes pronounce it also mostly in French like Mallorca. Mallorca. They, they forget the A, apparently. Oh. Hmm. Anyone else have beers? I have a uh, Café Correct. Café Correct. <laughs> hey, if, you give me, if you give me two minutes, I will pick my beer. Yeah, less than that. Thank uh, you. Was... Because this replaced the scrum beer that we do every two months in Port saint Charles, actually, and near Griffin Town, my friend. So I hope you're going to come uh, as soon as they reopen that city. 
But now we're going to design a city. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a while in Montreal. Yeah, I heard about July uh, 23rd lately. July and just 23rd. before this uh, amazing uh, business agility, conscious agility event, I was actually uh, helping one of my clients. Nothing to do with business agility, though. It's, it's legal stuff. I work for two uh, law firms here in Montreal. They're getting ready to uh, be uh, to apply the Constitution of Canada. Let me tell you. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, what I, what I saw at that meeting, that will be amazing, my friends. And they are starting to drop a uh, charge and the health ministry uh, about the family. They were prevent to be with their loved one. So that's one of the first case type of case. So they, were, they, are, they are launching it there. They are doing a, a press conference right now, actually, as we speak. This is the right. beer. I like hey, it. Well, All it. right. This is great. <laughs> yeah, better cerveza is good. <laughs> How do you say <laughs> that in Portuguese? <laughs> cerveza. Yeah. <laughs> Not that far. So again, for the five, six YouTubers right now, join us on the link that I put in the chat for you. It's, uh, it's happening with my great uh, coach, Anna. She will help you. If you have any comments, oh, yeah, say something. Okay. So, hey, we are live everywhere, even Shit. on Instagram, IGN. So I'm assuming, guys, if you're here uh, with your face and your full name, it's because you agree that I, Agile Lounge is not responsible for all the privacy stuff that Facebook and so on does, you know? So you agree, I'm, I'm assuming, by the fact that you're here with us, right? Okay, so... Um, the, the NDA has been signed. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not an NDA, NDA, actually, it's for you. No, it's because for us at Agile Lounge, it's very, very, very important that the privacy and stuff, it's really respected and uh, your confidentiality. So you always have a choice to have a nickname or even to do the Snowden thing like this, mm. you know, disappear. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to remove this because uh, do you see your screen in the mosaic, you two guys? I see your screen. You see my screen? Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, I see your the background there, but is that what I'm supposed to see? Or? I was I was wondering if when I put like all the participants, like we are a forum actually, like uh, in a mosaic, that if, um, if everybody was actually like this. So I saw on YouTube and Facebook, that's the way. So like... Yeah. People from the outside are actually uh, seeing it like we are a group instead of just a single person. I think you have to click on gallery view in the top right corner. That's what I did. Personal Zoom to have that represented. It is, but I was for you guys. Is it like a mosaic too, or? Well, you can choose speaker yeah, view or uh, or gallery view. So. Okay, so it's on your end, no problem. That's because yeah. I had a class this morning, and uh, they asked me how the because I was actually putting uh, as a gallery. And they said like they, it was not on their side as a gallery. So um, yeah, the best for this kind of panel, it's best to do it gallery view. So absolutely, we kind of see each other the same size. Or... Okay, so let me. Um, I'll remove yeah, so this I for now. Cha so I, I changed my name, AF. So I'm officially. Uh, You're officially uh, Montreal Michael. Oh, Marianne, like, <laughs> after Montreal Agile, I, it's Montreal Michael. Yeah. What have you? <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So 508, uh, we're going to start. We're going to start. I will welcome you first and uh, thank you very much for uh, being there. Uh, all of you, it's going to be exciting. I have Chris here, Anna on the other side uh, of the ocean. And um, we're going to have fun, I hope, as much as we, we did in French uh, last month. And uh, for me, it's I want to be very, very lean in that sense. I don't want to have like, it's really an open conversation. Exactly if we were at the Cat Origin Library, having our uh, correct coffee or our, our beer, and, uh, and try to answer that question in these uh, amazing time. I prefer to say amazing time we are in. And I'll, actually, that crisis, it's an accelerator for us who work in either project management or business agility or transformation of of organization and Chris um, do you have already the link for the, the the drawing thing for people outside and, and so on? yes where Please. can I post that are you post that well where where should I post that Facebook and uh, of course if you could give it to me I will open it to my screen as well yes so please uh, and then after we'll do a, a zoom uh, round stuff so that is the link that everyone can click on. And I'll just post it into the Facebook chat so that people yes. 
Um, ah, okay. This is my. <laughs> All right. So before we go to present each other, I would like to probably uh, have to do a working, or should I say, uh, a firm agreement with you, the Scrum way, properly, because I like to practice uh, what I preach and what I said. So um, you should see my screen in a couple of seconds. So again, what you receive, uh, Rise UN, uh, who read it before the before today? Is anybody has uh, any uh, preparation about this? What inspire us and the proposed agenda actually for the next uh, two to three hours, depending? Yes, is, no, maybe. Yes, that a. What if we say some of it and not all of it? That's the purpose, because yeah. right now we will be like, the reason I, I create this initiative is with working with many people right now and doing more than actually business agility transformation, I realized that this crisis is kind of an accelerator for the uh, digital transformation. And also, how do we work together? And all of a sudden, some of my clients, especially the corporate one, uh, they were like very, very uh, open to uh, what we try for years to implement such as a remote work or um, digital identity or uh, having like more flexible or trusting or self-organized team and stuff like this. And when Michel Blanc here in Quebec, a very uh, summit and uh, digital transformation did his forum uh, with politician, uh, sociologue, uh, what have you, I find it very interesting. And so we said like, why not as business agilists, I'm really passionate about this. I'd like to give my time for free and welcome any people who would like to share this and be part of that kind of brainstorming. See it more as a brainstorming. We're not going to actually do an agile scrum lean or Kanban thing of, you know, it's just like very openly like a forum. This is why I call it a forum. And all together, if we exchange uh, with a beer and stuff like this, do you agree with that? But of course, as it's not like we are in person, like Alistair Carbrand is highly suggesting, and one of the 12 principles. So I, I suggest this is a proposed agenda to answer the big question, which is how agility can us, uh, help us transform the post-coronavirus uh, world or post lockdown world, things like this, with three dimension, the human dimension, Actually, the interaction between us, virtually, really, and... Uh, by the way, Alexandre, we can only see your exp your um, finder window. I think you're sure. Et voilà. Is it better now? Um, no. Probably should share again and choose your PDF. Really? Your, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, we... Uh, no problem. Everybody has Let's some trouble with, with Zoom. At least uh, one time a day. Zoom mm -hmm. does this, yeah. There we uh, go. Is it, yeah, is there you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Especially today, I don't know for yeah. you guys if you used it, but today I've got two updates to install. Just saying. So, all right. So now you see it's a white screen, right? Yeah. All That's right. a PDF, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a PDF right now, just to propose, like, uh, to make it visual for you. Because, again, Agility, it's all about visual and people first. So uh, thank you, uh, Leandro. So... I suggest like we could have a first board uh, talking about the human, uh, how the uh, people actually could have a best experience or that's, that's a proposition, but we could like have the subject. Uh, the uh, takeaways from the French one was about the interaction, the small business, uh, uh, how do we engage employee, uh, the performance, how is that measure now, how the trust it is. And uh, as you could see, even today, like uh, since Google announced that uh, all its employees, for example, could work remotely, now Twitter does that, Apple, uh, of course, the GAFA, for sure, they try to lead by example. But how it's, it's us as uh, transformator, as consultant, how is it like we're going to have like uh, another way of even doing like um, agility and, and so on. Autonomy was a great, great team uh, that we saw. And it's just not about the self-organized team from Scrum uh, Vision. It's also about uh, the entrepreneurial mindset, the, the freedom mindset of lifestyle. 
and also the states or locality or producing uh, more closer to us and stuff like this. So that could be the, the topic of discussion that I propose you. So what I could what I could suggest is right now we could go around and you present yourself, you said who you are, what's your intention today? Uh, what is your motivation and intention and in what you do? And uh, what is your proposition of going on with uh, this three uh, table proposition? So we'd like to be first. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, uh, I'm John Margettis. Uh, in, I've been an Agile coach for a while, but in 2012, Hurricane Sandy in New York left us without a building for six months. And my own apartment got flooded with uh, one meter, four feet of water. And I became a statistic for the emergency management agency. So fast forward eight years, we're in another situation where people are told, take your laptops and go home. And uh, they're not ready for it, right? So uh, I was curious uh, to see what the discussion, where the discussion would leave. But I would say that I've been through something similar before. So uh, I can tell you more about what we did. And the place I worked was at the New York Stock Exchange at a peripheral building, not 11 Wall Street, but one that was down by the river. Mm. So, so uh, we had to recover fast. But that's, uh, so all these concepts now, COVID is not new to me in, in terms of what happens when people get dispersed like this without warning. And I'm just curious to see how the conversation goes. Amazing, welcome, John. Yep. I'm just gonna get a great asset. You pass the, the, the mic too? Uh, yes. Uh, since there are no volunteers, I'm going to volunteer Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good uh, agile way. Uh, Self-organization. That's good. Michael? Yeah. Can you hear me well? Yes. He seems like, hmm. Is he freezing? Hello? I think you, you froze for a second. Okay. You got to kick uh, your internet connection, then we're good. Uh, yeah, so uh, Michael, tell us. Uh, okay. If uh, this is going to be a problem, I'll go to a, a better place where my Wi-Fi is better. Your wife or your Wi-Fi? One second here. <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, I can go. Um, <laughs> Definitely the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Leandro. No, no, no wife. <laughs> okay. So Leandro, and then we'll go back to uh, to Michael after. Yeah. So I'm Leandro. Uh, I'm a scrum master. I live in Montreal. Um, right now, I have a job as a scrum master, but being involved with agile and business analysis for the last ten years of my life. Um, my idea here is to to brainstorm, exchange some ideas to see how people are seeing how we beat the other side of this crisis we are living right now or this new situation that we are putting to proof and see how how the, the other side will look like when we are out of this. There's a lot of brainstorms are, are around about that. So I would like to see in this community here, what you're seeing and maybe where we could get hands together and just go in the same direction. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Michael, you're back. Michael Dillis. His picture's back. Yeah. His microphone's muted though. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess I'll go in the interim yeah. uh, yeah. during the technical difficulties. So my name is Chris Bent. I'm originally from Boston, but now live in Montreal. And I am an entrepreneur and an artist. I am trying to have that be more comfortable label that I put on myself. And, uh, and I am building the platform that we will be using a little bit later to draw collectively. And it's uh, being used for virtual meetings, for icebreakers, for data visualization, a lot of different things. And so I got involved with Scrum Beer and AF, and I'm just uh, really liking the community that he's building up here. So glad to be part of the 
activity and uh, looking forward to participating, learning about all you guys. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, we, could, we could go to uh, Design a City, which is Will. Are you there, Will? Hey, guys, yeah. I can stop my video. My name is Will from uh, Design Green City. So I design thing. Uh, oh. My story is like uh, six years ago when I found out that Bitcoin I quit my job. And then I was able to think about how to design the green. We, we don't hear you really well, Will. I don't know if you have a microphone or something. It, it sounds like one of those ancient modems from the 1980s. <laughs> a 56K or maybe a 28.8? Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay. Okay. Is it better? Or my yeah, a little, a little better, yeah. Later and try to fix my Wi Fi. Okay. Well, you see, the Montreal Wi Fi is more like a 56K or 28.8 modem. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Michael, are you back? Michael Dennis, are we been losing you? Whoa. I think I'm back. Ah! Yeah, All right. that sounds great. Is that better? Yeah, I think. Yeah, we hear I changed really location. Well. Uh, okay, that's good. So, uh, what was it? Whoa. Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh, you can't hear me now either? Yeah, it was. Uh, that's weird. Because at the beginning, you were fully there, and I don't know what's happening. If you okay. need to kill your video for a little bit, just to talk, it might help. Yeah. Or maybe ask your family to stop watching stuff on the internet. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Uh, um, so. Mm, no, we don't. Uh, we don't get you, my friend. OK. Do you hear me? Yes, now. Go ahead. Wow, okay, I'm gonna have to look at these technical challenges here. Okay, now we are you well, so maybe without the video for now it's good. So go uh, go ahead, tell us who you are, what's your intention, okay. and yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm an agile coach now for a very long time. I've been uh, started off in uh, software 20, 30 years ago, and I've been an agile coach for about 15 years. And I've seen Agile uh, in applied pretty much all over the world. Um, so one of the things I like how I've worked in a lot of third world nations. And, uh, you know, in thinking about today, I've, I've had, I spent a lot of time working in, uh, in India and in, uh, in Kenya and South Africa. And when you work in these kind of countries that are, uh, very third world and uh, you, you think about some of the challenges that we have you know as a as a g7 country and i th think about some of the challenges in speaking it, it gives you some perspective you know uh you know there, there's a great quote by gandhi that says you know the true measure of any society can be you know found in how it treats its most vulnerable members and i find right now we there's look at all you know, our most vulnerable members are are being infected by by COVID, and I'm really uh, very looking forward today to collaborating. and And I really like how uh, you know uh, Alexander, the way you've organized this is in the human autonomy and digitally, and especially this first part of human side. Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to, to dis discussing you know some of the different things uh, that that impact us and how we can maybe from collectively uh, concepts and ideas in terms of how we can apply agility to help things during and post COVID be better. Thank you and welcome, uh, Michael. I'm glad you're here and thanks again for PMC for uh, the last push uh, last week. Um, William, are you back with us to present yourself and otherwise you're gonna move, uh, we're gonna move on. Okay, 
So if you don't mind, guys, I try to include everyone, but uh, at some point, so, as I do in the real world. So, so I'm assuming that you all want to jump. We're going to go first with the human question, the human interaction question, and all of these things about how how we could do something smarter and better uh, moving on. Are you agreeing with this? So it should be our first. Okay. So I will leave this there and we'll come back after. And do we not, do we need to do a, a, a break if everyone, or we just go ahead and if we need to do something, we just leave the screen as you will leave the uh, classroom and you do whatever you have to do. Oh, yeah, we need we'll, to have to schedule some breaks uh, in between. Yeah, we'll, we can just experience technical difficulties for a minute and come back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, some of my coaches, sometimes they call it bio. I yes. need a bio, so <laughs> there you go. All right, so let me uh, change the screen now. Because um, the thing, the, the funny thing to do now will be, and I don't know, no, that's curious. Got a huge lineup of people on Facebook. Now there's nobody. And uh, how is how is Pickle doing? So, do you see the full screen now? Yes. Okay. What you just opened up was the drawing canvas. So, yes. I will share with you the actual. Um, yeah, because I won't draw personally today. Not because I don't like it, but. Uh, right. But yeah. So I just put that into the chat, the Zoom chat. Um, that you might need to. Yeah, there you go. Okay. It's good. It's good for everybody. So this yeah. is the board where we should see uh, people on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Steemit, YouTube, wherever uh, they received the link from my assistant to draw with us, actually, to give them their ideas. It's, it, it's, and you know, as you know, in agility, it's always nice to make things visual. For us, we could give it a try if you'd like to start drawing or marking something uh, from uh, your devices. You could use it, uh, the link that you receive on the Zoom chat. You could apply it for either your uh, your phone, your tablet, or your computer. And a beautiful smile here, probably from Chris. Yeah. Of course. The, the leader. So this is sometimes like we could start and engage the conversation with that. Or as we are all experienced gentlemen, I could leave it there on the screen to jump in as soon as people will come in and start drawing things according to our conversation. That was the kind of the way proposed to do this. But in our case, I would invite you to uh, anyone starting to answer um, the question. Can I move? All right, I guess I could kick off my thoughts, but I think coming out of this and what I'm hearing from others, of course, you know, my contract got terminated early. I was at a company that uh, specializes in selling fuel around the world to airlines and cruise ships. So you can imagine what that means. Um, so uh, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, the immediate impacts are that the, obviously a lot of people are getting uh, laid off. A lot of people are unemployed. A lot of people are, nervous about uh, when their next contract is going to be. And if they're not well prepared, they're going to be, you know, some human elements to that, that they're going to be, you know, not, not pleasant. So um, <clears throat> coming out of it, there, there are three or four scenarios that I can see either there's going to be a huge need for, uh, you know, scrum masters, coaches and things like that, like that to reconstruct uh agility uh that in, in a way because as teams have been cut back as programs have been cut when the investment kicks up that's going to imply new teams new investment uh new organization but one of the things that i also see is the the companies are going to be revisiting their business continuity plans mm. and we all in the industry need to be ready to have our own basket of proposals uh to angle that uh, because that's a, a relevant question now. If COVID hits again or the next COVID or the next thing, what are you going to do? You can't ignore it anymore. What's your plan? So I, I do believe there's going to be a lot of opportunity in that realm. Uh, it's just that we don't know what companies are going to survive and the ones that do, what, what appetite they're going to have for investment uh, coming out of this and how much damage they will have suffered. Uh, as, as that data becomes available, we'll know more. Uh, but that, that's sort of what 
I see, if in, in the less optimistic case, the jobs will come back much uh, slower. There will be a downward pressure in uh, income, like salaries. I'm already hearing things of like 30, 40% cuts that people are trying to force on uh, whatever contracts are out there. So they're taking advantage of the situation. You mean especially and on consultant or even for people in a, in a regular type of job? Like the ones that I've heard so far, uh, I've, I've had a few examples, at least in the U.S. I don't know what's going on in Canada yet, but in the U.S. already, even for positions that have already been negotiated, they, they came back and they're asking for you know, like 30% cuts. Uh, for one, one colleague that was on another contract, they asked her to take a 40% cut, which was crazy, but um, – They're, they're definitely taking advantage of the situation. But the for full-time employees, what I'm seeing right now, in order to avoid layoffs, some companies are, are doing 10% cuts in uh, in salaries across the board, around 10% or so oh. as a first level to try to preserve jobs. But the, the point is that it, it's unclear if the economic supply-demand dynamics revert to a, a state that we've been used to Uh, in the last couple of years. So the human element is also going to be one perhaps of less motivation. If people do get compensated less, we have to be aware of that. Uh, and if they're asked to work more um, because someone else is going to take their more job. And may, may, maybe yeah. with a lot of restriction into the middle term. Because I heard yes. someone at, at one of my client plays, it says like, okay, we're starting back working since last Monday, this Monday. But uh, the bar are not open. We might not be able to travel to our favorite place and stuff and stuff. So yes, that will be part of the experience. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't so. want to cut. The... No, no. But I, I really like what John what you mentioned in terms of like that human aspect because, and and I love how it's so appropriate because like like it was interesting because like last week when we were going to originally have this, last week was kind of International Mental Health Week, <laughs> and it was just like you know it was and I was just thinking of how appropriate it was because how this is impacting like people like all over the world right and even just today i was listening to um on your point uh like andrew Cuomo, for example the governor of new york was saying how um companies you know they're they're you know they're there's they're getting buyouts or whatever or they're getting subsidies but then what are they doing is they're going and firing their employees to actually bring up their stock value you know, so that that whole human aspect so now they're actually and they learned a little bit from the 2007-2008 recession saying No, no, no. Now they're going to actually tie it, that compensation to um, uh, to you actually maintaining your staff post COVID. Right. So obviously here in Canada, there's been a huge initiative to try to, you know, give companies like, you know, like, like PMC and all companies is, hey, compare if you've lost business, we'll help you, you know, ride this wave and try to keep you guys in business and keep your staff uh, on board. So because they have such a huge human impact. Uh, I mean, it's so anyways, I'll let you continue. But it was just it's it's so appropriate know, but what that's, you're saying. That's the way of it. Like, it's, uh, it's like crosstalk. It's really an open sure, brainstorm sure. crosstalk. As long as we all respect each other and everybody has a space, I will be there as a facilitator to make sure of this. So yeah. this is why I, sure. I usually talk a lot, but I don't talk except to help you guys going on. Maybe I have some question for you, like a like a host, like a podcast. No, host no, no but it's just it's just it's that mental health side. You're talking the human side, yeah. you know. Uh, here in, in Canada, for example, like we have Bill Canada that says, you know, let's talk you know it's it mental health has become a more open topic right and mm -hmm. you know I, i'll ask uh, i'll say chris hey john how are you and you'll say oh we're fine but and you don't realize all the stuff that's happening and you know uh i mean to the to a point where i mean you know be it in the u.s and canada all over the world companies are trying to open up and take the risk of of of, of the the potential harm you know of health Because they have, you know, they have a paycheck, you know, that they need to feed their families, right? The rent is not stopping, uh, paying for your mortgage or paying the, the, the electricity bills, all these things aren't stopping. And it's incredible how much stress is adding it. Like, a, I remember um, there was like a, a stats can uh, thing that like basically like in Canada, just on the tip, forget about COVID, pre-COVID, it's like pretty much like, uh, like, one out of every five people is impacted by mental health issues. That's before this. Can you imagine how much it's going to increase with all the, the yeah, stress? The PTSD and, that's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And the other element that I've seen already with some friends and colleagues 
and it started even while I was still on that last couple of weeks of that contract when when they first sent us home. Um, the sudden with the schools closing, and 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 suddenly the parents are asked to to, uh, and they're forced by some jurisdictions to spend four to six hours with their kids to do homeschooling to make sure that they pass for the year while trying to put in eight to 10 hours a day with their work. Uh, we, we've got big problems with that, uh, that, that are unsolved at this point. Um, and, and that, you know, that's, that's wearing down a lot on, on the mental state of, of these parents and our colleagues. So that, that's another factor we got to watch out for. Hey, John, if I'm yeah. asking you, because in your presentation, you said that you work for the stock exchange on the river. Uh, right? Yeah, so so the, the main New York Stock Exchange building is up the street. It's up a hill a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was there were some peripheral offices, and we were in that annex building. Which but, was but actually, my, my question is, by yeah. your experience, is because we talked about, like, our company right now are reacting between the, the market itself or the stock exchange that I call the financial type of thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, and the real economy. Because with that type of pandemic, it's the real economy who is attacked. It's, uh, it's a Joe Pizzeria at the corner of uh, 14 and, and Fifth Avenue that is attacking. Uh, it's all these, uh, all the small size, big size, medium size. So this is affecting the real economy, the people who produce the, the food chain and everything. And, and, and lately, I saw that my stock exchange, because I, I play at the, at the market too, yep. and, and they went up. But I think this is not good because the real economy, all it will recover and all it will give a better experience for worker engagement. Because before that crisis, as you mentioned, I think, Michael, we already saw a lot of slowly it was starting to be a bit like uh, difficult to hire people, to engage people. Uh, because of some structural thing and even the economy was kind of unsure but now with those lockdown as you mentioned it forced people to completely either switch or pivot on the way they they should like do business even myself right now i'm doing like maybe one eighth of my time in business agility all the rest i do it as a ux cx designer of e-commerce of helping small business actually getting into Uber Eats or Skip the Dish and stuff like this. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm not even doing like coaching for Leandro as yeah, a Yeah, but what, what, what John was talking about, like, I mean, that is one industry. I mean, I know they're trying to prop up the airline industry and the, mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, I mean, I, I was seeing this thing just on this past weekend. I, I freaked out how they were actually saying there was, uh, what's it called there? The um, uh, World Travel and Tourism Council. They had this thing that were saying, like in the world, like 10% of the global GDP is from travel and tourism. And they're saying that this like COVID is going to impact like 50 million jobs. And like, you're talking about, you're like, you're, you're like, you're John, you're like almost like this, um, uh, like uh, an adjacent job, like your job is linked to that industry. And without that industry, all these, you know, this trickle down that it, it, it is going to happen. I mean, and mm -hmm. uh, and and there's so many people in different in the service industries, and I mean, it's it's incredible. Like, I mean, uh, the new normal. Like they were actually saying, like the airlines were saying, how until there really is a vaccine, like the only kind of travel we're going to see is like regional travel. Like you know, within uh, you're not you're not going to see much international travel. So you know, think about how many countries live off of tourism mm -hmm. you know john you and i are of greek origin think oh, yeah. about those greek islands this summer you know mm -hmm. that they're you know uh they, they they make money from like may to like september to make them live from october to may yep. they're not gonna have that and, and and greece is like for example is a country that that's already under a, a austerity measures and it's already financially hard and now that's going to be this and and i you know what's a bloom even away like i even saw this um i don't know where i saw this i was on cnn or somewhere like actually greece i don't know how they did this but they're one of like the lowest countries in europe affected by covid because they started so early with countermeasures and stuff like that. so at least on that side they're okay but you see like 
the human side of this is just going to, I mean, the more and more I think about it, it's just like, um, like, a, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're like, the, 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 I was mentioning before, like StatScan, they were saying um, like one in every two Canadians, like something like 54, 55% are like so stressed about like, not, not uh, very stressed about this. I mean, so it's like every one of our, uh, and that's just Canada. You imagine the, in the, you know, I, I see the stuff coming out of the U S and like, you know, like, you know, we're in Montreal, you know, mm. a few hours away is the state of New York. Right. And you see everything that's happening uh, in there. And I mean, uh, like I said, this, this human aspect of our conversation, and and and, I, and again, in the terms of the context, is how can I, agile help? Now, make if I may this... interrupt, because of course it's the human aspect, but now we are going into more a, a political or economic aspect, like more macro. If we get back a little bit more, like because what we just discussed is this decode uh, table that we did, I did with a senator here in Ottawa, a couple of weeks ago. That was at the beginning of the lockdown. And so I don't know if you'd like, if you'd like guys to go about, I don't know if you see on your screen right now. Uh, no, we're in your finder again. No, we're we, to your, yeah, your, your main see, thing. Yeah, that's, oh. that's a better but, view there. That's, um, uh, trying to bring back this, this discussion is really all right. for, there the, we go. Yep. for the human part. Oh, okay, okay. The human part, yes, Leandro, what you Yeah. Tell me. Um, what I'm seeing right now, uh, I'm really seeing some real people with cases like that is, um, what we experience is a change of priorities for, for the human being, right? Right now you don't need, not you don't need it, but you can't go to a restaurant and, and have her food there. I have a lot of friends that are, that are waiters, they are chefs, and they cannot go to work at this point. But as they lost, some of them lost their jobs. A lot of them found jobs in other industries. One of them who used to be a waiter right now is selling insurance. <laughs> in a big bank here in Canada. It's, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, his life completely changed. So I think it's time for everybody. Uh, it's forcing us to be open to change and embrace change. Yeah. Uh, and I even have experience on my, on my family right now. My father and my mother, don't, they don't live together for years, but they work in the same industry. And I'd see my mother, she really changed for online business like in cash of weeks. She had an online training. Uh, everything she was doing in an office, she's doing online. And my father on the other side, he's really conservative at this point. He's keeping a, a, a really uh, a really nice real estate. He's paying a, a really big bucks for rental space, but not open for that change. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, I, change? yeah. If you don't mind, uh, we, we got a couple uh -huh. of people on Facebook right now. Uh, I'm not just ping me uh, on my other screen because you don't see my studio, but I have four screen right now in front of me. So <laughs> let me go. Uh, so oh, there's Joe. Only four, Alexandre. Come huh? on. No. Only, four. Only, only four. Yeah, so far. Like the stock market, John. So that's. Uh, <laughs> so let's say, Joe per, uh, Perguino. Bonjour, Joe. Welcome back. Welcome here. So, okay, Alex, no, I won't say that. Uh, what is, uh, we have, uh, yes, the airline tourist industry already going to be a lot of pain. And I already see it because, you know what, prior to, I did a trip in February going on uh, in Mexico to start a new business, a new travel, uh, what we call responsible travel and historical travel. Can you tell me, can I tell you that it's, this is on the highs right now? I will uh, have to redesign it. Now we have also Benoit de Grasse from PMC. Welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, on Facebook, uh, you're asking us. So it's a question for us. I don't know if you guys are on Facebook too. Uh, so you could probably see it. He says like, uh, here's a question for us. Uh, what can Agile contribute to help lift lockdown safely and quickly? Oh, I like that. So he's probably one of the uh, hashtag, uh, they can't find as soon as possible. <laughs> so, so you want me so to repeat the question and we could make some... Uh, some aspect of it on the human, uh, we are still on the human factor, of course. Yeah, sure. Human interaction. So uh, how is Agile? Because we are how Agilists right now on the panel, I think. That's what I heard. So uh, <laughs> what's your thought on it? Don't go into framework or whatever. You just like the, the value mindset and principle of Agile. How could I? I don't know if- I think, I think Alexandre, you mentioned something before and it was kind of covered a little bit by Leandro. 
you talk, you mentioned the word about pivoting, right? And right now, I mean, one of the spirit of agile is experimentation and kind of uh, inspecting and adapting and learning as we kind of go along. Uh, everybody who thinks they're an expert in COVID, nobody's an expert in COVID. We haven't <laughs> seen this in a hundred years since the Spanish. Uh, I agree. So, <laughs> so, you know, they're coming up with these models and all these things. The reality is, is that we're going on. And I think that I actually like the, the for, from, a, from an agile perspective uh, is to actually say, to actually be humble and honest and say, we don't know. But what we, we, we are going to learn and we're going to improve and adapt. So I'm seeing this like with my different clients that the, 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 the best clients I have are the ones that are genuinely honest. The CEOs are telling them, we don't know. But what we, but what, as we, what we do know, that's what we're going to be honest with you, and we're we're, we're going to be transparent and communicate that with you. So, to kind of answer Benoit's question from an agile perspective is, we'll ask him. We, we'll ask him. Yeah, we have to be like uh, f- fact based, and then make decisions like almost like in an MVP style is is to test out our hypothesis. So, for example, like you know, social distancing. How do you social distance when you're in an elevator? How do you social distance? The schools are opening up. How do you tell a, f- a five-year-old or oh, social distance with another five-year-old? You know, I mean, so as you said, we don't know. And if, we don't know. If the, the commu- communitary transmission is like this. And, uh, and I don't like the, the term, by the way. Huh? We, we are a group of people in business agility and conscious agility. We call it physical distance. Yeah, I like that because physical distance yeah. better because we are social. Because I, I we, completely agree with that. I hate if it's a social uh, uh, distanciation, we won't be together here even virtually. Yep. No, I agree I'm, with that. I'm so, sorry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very pain in the ass in terms of words and semantics. No, no. But sure, these are sure. powerful words that could change our mindset, actually. As, as a coach, guys, you probably know. To change a mindset, you input words and, and, and power into words. But great, great thought, uh, Michael. I didn't mean to cut you out. It's just like mm-hmm. like to, to engage. So anyone well, else would like to, to jump like on all my... Agile? Because it's exactly the main question of this forum. Yeah. All But Agility what, will help us go through. And What and Michael just said is like, we need to embrace an empirical way of life right now. Yes. We just take decision based on what we learned so far. We cannot, you know, we can think about 1,000 scenarios prepare for 1,000 scenarios, but in the end, we find out that the reality won't be anything we planned for. And as humans, we're not ready for that. That's the truth, right? If you don't know what we, we, don't, we don't even know if things are possible, right? You know? Uh, Everything is possible. Yeah, you know, like there's that so, famous, what's that famous Mandela quote there? Uh, it always seems impossible until it's done, right? Yeah. So like, if uh, I were to tell uh, you yeah. like uh, a month well, I'm doing ago, it right now. So why are you telling me it's impossible? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if you were to tell me, oh, can we do uh, so many thousands of or millions of tests or whatever, or whatever, whatever. We, you, and you and really, no, guys, sudden, I, I really appreciate the fact that Leandro and Michael bring back empirism because my late mentor, Mike Beadle, was actually emphasizing is because I'm a dropout of astrophysics at McGill. He was a physician, a PhD in physics. And I think, I, I, I'm not saying like the coaches who are not from science or engineer are, are less good, I mean, agile coach, but <laughs> we forgot so much, especially in North America, the empirism, the scientific way of observing a team, observing people interacting together, and then propose something to, with the agile value, because agile is not a methodology. It's, it's four values and a set of 12 principles that should help leaders make decision and actually help and propose and empower people with their skills rising up rising up again so that that was exactly and i like benoit question because there was exactly the mindset that that my guys had when we start this idea of gathering people together in the agile forum i i think also the the other aspect that we're seeing even at work is look if if think of um how many companies ha- have like these huge buildings and all, And, and now the, this COVID is going to change our human interaction where yeah. all of a sudden, look, we're having a Zoom session and, and it's, it's becoming more and more of a reality, you know. But I love the fact that, you know, Alexandre, you mentioned about this social versus physical distancing. While we are physically distanced, we need to increase the amount of like social interaction and, 
you know, uh, bringing like, you know, life to, you know, even like, for example, look, we're using this pickle thing on the side, right? It's a, it's an aid to kind of help ex, um, enhance the, the message that we're trying to get across. Yeah. So, so to go, to go back to, again, to Benoit's question, that's another way, um, uh, like, like, you know, if we do consulting or, or training, like with our clients, I don't want to do this boring Zoom session and show a PowerPoint. Are you you got to make it lively and interactive. And, and uh, like, we actually even tell some of our teams that are working like this in a collaborative way, don't turn off your audio and video. Simulate, like, if you're literally back at work in an in a, in a, in a open workspace environment, keep that uh, osmotic communication. And there's a nice agile expression, right? Uh, and keep it yeah. you know, alive and going. Michael, you just briefly touched on the workspaces. And I think that part is really interesting. I just saw recently Twitter told all of their employees that they can work from home in perpetuity forever from here on out. So they're not even being expected to go back into the office. And so I definitely wow. see that. That's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can kind of see that happening more. And it's actually... Interesting. I was talking with another company um, who had planned to move their entire workforce remote anyway, and this is just um, accelerating them. But they are doing a model that I think is really cool, where they're actually taking art galleries and repurposing them into these collaborative spaces that their employees can then book times at and meet with their team to have that in-person collaboration and work together for a day, for a couple of hours, for maybe a week, but have this kind of flexible space in the major cities that their employees are located around, but then everyone else just works from home and accomplishes what they need to do on their own. So they only have the spaces for when they're coming together. And I think that could be a really cool, almost like future of coworking where you just rent it out yes. for your team instead of going into the office every day. I'll, Chris, I'll, ta Chris, I'll, I'll take it even, oh. I'll even take it one level further. Um, when we had, here in Montreal, for example, uh, we had the agile tour back in the end of November. Uh, we had this amazing lady who had come from Australia, who was one of our keynote speakers. Her name was uh, Sandy Mamoli. And she, uh, oh, New she, Zealand. Yeah, from exactly. She's from New Zealand, and uh, she 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 was amazing. She came in here, and, and she uh, she's an author of this great book called um, uh, "Creating Great Teams." So she's an author with I think David Mole, and and so she talked about how empowering teams to let them choose. Like basically, I have your product owners, I have your product manager say, what is it you want? And then we'll organize ourselves and say, how how should we create our teams? Even choose our managers and stuff like that. It's an incredible technique. Now under COVID, this environment is actually going to the next level, which what you just said before, Chris, is hey, if we are going to use an open space, be it virtually or in person, let us use this self-selection approach, but in a, even on a larger concept. So it's like it's... <clears throat> This, this, it, what uh, Alexandre said at the beginning of this call, which is how uh, how COVID has kind of forced, you know, it's uh, creativity accelerated, you know, these ideas that may have come out later on, but now we're we're doing it even more. Because if I may add, like Chris, I don't know if we have the same client or something, because I just did uh, last Thursday actually a working agreement through Zoom. For those, well, you're probably familiar with the Scrum working agreement of a, a building team, and they decide the way they're going to work uh, with ceremony, how long the sprint will be, and so on and so on. And uh, for them, they were not thinking of lockdown and post-lockdown. They were actually building their next release with uh, having to work remotely. As you said, Chris, they don't, want, they don't even expect to get back to the office for at least this year, 2020. And they specifically draw into their canvases of working agreement, team working agreement, uh, the fact that the only time they will gather in person, okay, will be for the planning session, some refinement upon the request or whatever, and the retrospective. That's it. Even the product review, they won't even like, I'm talking to you about sure. practical thing that I help a team built right now with this and uh, this is a small uh, software company here in Ville Saint Laurent and they decide that finally they won't renew their lease and they will use co-working space to those ceremony, those scrum ceremony, they, they're going to help. So you see, and this, they had it in mind for years and years 
to actually save money and to please their worker, having not to travel that far to get to the office. That's one of the key factor of the human experience, the commute. Huh? Ask mm -hmm. the people in London if they like to commute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, so I, I have an interesting thing about that. Um, on week one, in my company, we are right now on week 10 of confinement, right? We're just starting, well, we're in the middle of week 10. But on week one, I asked my team in the retrospective, uh, my three teams that I have right now, what, what are you liking about being in lockdown? What is <laughs> good about that? Everybody was saying commute. I don't have to commute anymore. Everybody was happy with that. I asked the same question again. Yes. They forgot about commute. They say, oh, I spend my more time with my kids, you know? Even my daily scrums with a couple of teams, we have kids in the daily scrum. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Have to, I actually have a little, like, I have a little, uh, uh, some toys on purpose because I know a lot of my colleagues have little kids. So when they come in, I go, hey, look at this. Well, that's a good idea. We use that. My yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah, but they don't disturb, right? They just, they're okay curious about what's going on in no, there. But even what, what you're bringing up is that work-life balance, right? Like yeah. a lot of my clients are saying, actually, you please schedule no meetings during 12 to 1. Really give the time, like, you know, for lunchtime or, or you know, be aware of, you might have little kids or, uh, you know, what John was mentioning before about having to homeschool and stuff like that. Well, you need to kind of be aware of when that's happening, right? And how- exactly. you know, uh, that's one of the points that uh, we work with the team. Is that actually, even the CEO of my company says, hey, we know that's a special time. Nobody's 100% uh, productive at this point. You have to do homeschool. We need to take care of the kids when they're not entertained with school. Uh, it, everything is different. You still have to work with that. So we know that. But think about what Alex Brown said before, right? Like as one of the, our core agile principles, right? Is it's the mention a sustainable pace. Yeah, well, exactly. what's sustainable when you're working at home, right? You have to factor in, hey, I've got a couple of kids or I've got this or I've got, you know, a, so now this concept of sustainable pace will take a new definition. So again, to go back to Benoit's question, how does agility, we have to factor in now this, this work-life balance. I had the... Um, yeah. On that aspect, on that aspect, if I may, Michael, uh, with the Conscious Agility Consortium that I'm building with uh, many people, including Karen Burns. I don't know if you know Karen Burns from San Francisco. She's a great speaker on uh, Conscious Scrum. And uh, because a lot of people, unfortunately, I, I, don't wanna, I don't try to be bald, but the sustainable thing or the, the, even the book of Jeff Shutterland about uh, uh, twice the work and half the time, a lot of people misunderstood that type of principle. It's not about squeezing your worker and to sustain. No, sustainability will be will going with the focus of what you have to do. And lately, I have three teams right now. They are doing their version of Scrum because Scrum, it's totally adaptable. It's not a one size fit all. And what they experience right now, it's more productivity. The proficiency of the teams is better now, even if they have to do homeschooling, especially for those who have like college who, who do online school still, because it's happening here in Montreal. I Some think school I didn't close. They, they do the lesson on the, on the mm -hmm. computer. So, so the thing is now they could work at 8 PM. They, what, it's not the time nine to five, the, the nine to five experience for me, I think it's, it's, it's not even the 20th century, it's the 19th century. And we are in the 21st century. So, so a lot like this, I would like to get back to Benoit, if you don't mind, because yep. Anna and I, we represent those who are in John. Oh, okay, John, go ahead. I don't want to cut. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say in, in 2014, if you remember the World Cup, mm -hmm. we, had, we had remote teams uh, all over the place, uh, South America, Argentina, Colombia, all the places where the Uruguay, right? So... We came in and told them at the beginning of the World Cup, we said, look, uh, we know you're going to watch the games, but we do not want you programming and coding when you watch the games. <laughs> so I want all of you to tell us what games you're going to watch, put it in your calendar. We don't care when you do the work. <laughs> That's great. And we had the best month ever, like the most hey, productive month, right? So I just wanted to throw that in, right? So Awesome, John. Are you a football uh, fan too? Uh, I only watch World Cup every four years. Then the TV goes silent. <laughs> okay. I like I like John. You mentioned 2014. There was a great book that came out that year, exactly on that topic. And uh, and, and I think about it now. Like now, you just made me think about this book. 
and now that I think about it, now in COVID, it's almost like this woman was prophetic. Uh, the um, what's the author's name? Um, uh, Tra Tracy Brower. Tracy, if you guys ever want a really cool book, yeah. the, the title of the book I love it. It says, "Bring Work to Life by Bringing a Life to Work." Exactly. So and with it, love, and, with and love. she and, and and the whole book talks about how do you actually uh, have this healthy work life balance? How do leaders and organizations factor in? Like what you said, John is, hey, let's say the World Cups are important to you. How do we factor in? And sure enough, what do you see? The productivity goes up, the motivation goes up, the level of engagement goes up. So. Here's another example of how you, this agile mindset factors in the human side, and then it's a win-win-win. It's a win for the individual, a win for the team, and a win for the company from a product productivity side. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, yeah, you're pulling out the task switching costs when you behave that way, and, and you <laughs> reap the benefits, right? So, Awesome. Yeah. I think people also can't hide behind the fact that they just show up early, leave late, look good, <laughs> talk to the boss. Like, it's really... People it's are, the value, the outcome. It's, it's that what counts, you like. produce, the outcome. And so um, if you're not producing, then it's blatantly obvious. And so I think that is also kind of potentially driving some of this this productivity. Uh, yeah. A parting thought for a human stuff. I know we got to run, run to the next topic, but think how many of you have ever experienced uh, being told that your contract is terminated <laughs> over Zoom or over a phone, really? not being that in happened? person? Oh, that happened to me, but I'm, I'm used to that stuff But because uh, I'm a traveling consultant. But uh, it, it's happened to a lot of people. So imagine how they feel at the end of the day, right? But Zoom and, was like like that, like on the screen like that? Literally, literally. And because in front of I, other people. I got people. one of my clients who actually yeah. uh, canceled my contract on SMS. So Yeah, yeah, that, that's been so going text, on. So. Texting, it's kind of even worse. So, so AF, would you prefer to get it via text or face-to-face -face in Zoom? <laughs> Actually, uh, I always get it before I receive the memo <laughs> because I feel it. I'm really uh, sensitive about this. If you, so if, if, yeah, yes. want, if you guys want like a thing on how to do it, the CEO of Airbnb recently had to fire 1,900 people, a quarter of his workforce, and the letter that he sent everyone and just how they went about it was like a picture-perfect way of actually leaving people and departing with them. He's turning his... He's letting everyone keep their computers to continue the job search. He's creating a special website to source uh, the jobs for all those 1,900 people so that other employers could go there and find them. And he's actually turning his HR team, who's normally about talent acquisition, into actually placing that talent Chris? at other companies. That is, that's another way of uh, – that's, that's servant leadership right there. Yeah. And that's another kind of – look at how – even in a negative way, it's like, you know what? I'm going to enable you. I'm going to empower you. I'm, how can I help? Look, I can't employ you anymore, but I'm going to do whatever I can to help you transition, to help you. Uh, so that is, for yeah. me, is, wow. You know, I, think it does I, I didn't know that. That's a really great. Uh, yeah, I would, I would read the letter because it's just like, it's amazing. And I, uh, I read a Medium article where someone just like breaks down all of the different points to it. And it really is incredible, like everything that they're doing, just stressing that it's not about you it's about the current change in the situation and the redundancies due to so much less work um so like easing that out and also keeping the door open in case things do turn back around now you've left these 1900 people on good terms and they might refer other people to you they might come back and then it just makes your hiring process so much easier because they already know your culture they know how to integrate in it there's no onboarding. There's no high recruitment fees that you have to pay that's now. Amazing. So that's I think so, it just makes so a lot cool. of sense. Um, obviously, like it, it takes that human side of things and that empathy to depart well and not just like ax everyone all at once in one big group Zoom and then close your laptop and say, well, uh, job well done. But uh, yeah, I think if, if you read the whole letter, it's uh, it's very cool. All right, guys. So if you don't mind, there's a lot of people who are talking to us on Facebook. Okay. So uh, I think Ben uh, has a feedback go, for us. Let me go back here. Go ahead, Darius. Let us know what's happening because I'm you not on mind. Facebook. As so. I said, it's like I'm more than a facilitator in a normal agile way now. I'm also a host and a kind of a social network. Uh, uh, let me see here because uh, Ben, 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 where are you, Ben? Actually, I invited him if you'd like to join us on Zoom. Okay, so Ben, Benoit de Grasse, uh, 
I like I like the last tack. So we should not assume that some things won't be in in our future. So ours. This could blind us to opportunities. Uh, I said also like uh, your earlier slide showed construction as potential loser, but actually uh, the wife be winners. They, they might be, that's yeah, probably a typo here. They might be winners for construction. So if you'd like, we could go back to this uh, uh, Canadian Senate uh, prospection on the economy of COVID, if you'd like, uh, with the loser and the winners of the past uh, pandemic. Uh, but and how it's, uh, it's affecting, we could close the human factor. Or again, you decide if we'd like uh, to discuss more of this before going to the autonomy, or we bridge to the autonomy with these type of topics. Because autonomy, it's all about industry and all about the production and all about the sovereignty of food and so on. So we, can, we, we might be a bridge, but Benoit is telling that uh, because probably we could show the slide again and see it uh, by industry. And he says, uh, lots of offices may need to be reconfigured and create tons of work. It's already starting. I can tell you here in Montreal, I don't know you guys, uh, and Virgin oh, but yes. it's already start here. Yep. And uh, my client in New York, the same. Uh, it's, it's it's already uh, on the way. Then after we have uh, Joey. Yeah, I think one of, one of, I mean, we're probably going to talk that later on when we talk about maybe more the digital transformation. But one of the things that's becoming now is this touchless or contactless environment, right? It's uh, so mm. yeah, definitely. Uh, it's going to be the. It's you're going to see. It's going to become more and more the new norm. Yeah, but, so I know uh, that we, uh, we lost uh, Will uh, on the panel because uh, he is building actually, uh, his company is design uh, intelligence city and design. Um, it's all about this type of thing, actually, Mike. So I don't know if we'll be able to, we'll be able to discuss it like uh, without uh, the uh, the creative guy uh, he is, but uh, let me see. So John, I think when we, we get when we get to the digital transformation side, I think that'll be a good place yes. to kind of talk about that. Yeah, perfect. So if, if someone could uh, take note of it or draw it on the on the thing. So Joey telling us like, uh, once we get out of this, probably you mean the lockdown or the pandemic, there will be a new normal as someone says on, I think it was you, Mike. Actually, I don't like the new normal because uh, in French we said like norm bien, norm good. I will prefer something like innovative and new, completely new, not normal. Anyway, that's my, my five cents. Um, Technology will help us create new tools to collaborate and work together. Well, actually, we are in it right now. So we'll see. So if Joey, you could expand on it if you hear me right now, if you're still on Facebook. And uh, because uh, it's an interesting thought, but um, by, you by the way, AF, on that topic of normal, normal in a very agile way is very relative. My normal could be your abnormal, right? So. Normal is just a, it's, when we talk about a culture and stuff like that, it's a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. kind of assimilating or working in, in, a, in a common way. So, uh, and who knows what the new normal, like again, in, experimentation, uh, adaptation, inspection, this is going to be the, this is going to, uh, people are going to learn agile in this, like it or not, because mm -hmm. it's the only way, you know, where does agile thrive, right? In very high volatile, in very high innovator or high uncertain times. Can you get any more volatile and uncertain than what we are in right now? So uh, agile and lean startup thinking and chaos stuff. This is going yeah, to have to But again, I think I don't think we are on the big frameworking or um, the, the ways will be the ways to, to adapt. Probably, John, you could share things from uh, Sandy about it or any catastrophe or any pandemic. Because the thing right now, agility, the, the meaning of it, if, if people stop seeing agility as a method, or as a methodology, or as a kind of a framework, and they see it as actually... Oh, I'm thinking of a mindset. I'm thinking that mindset. Okay. Of, no, so, no, I agree. So, but I mean, like, that, that will be our role as a transformation, transformation agent to make sure that people now finally embrace the real agility. So Not the, the agile yeah. buzzword of being more productive or being more this and that and applying like a lot of concept just of course being empirical you have to apply some concept but at some point what's in it for the uh, human experience the human interaction and so, i will invite uh, I you think... to to read the book h2h by brian kramer okay there's no more b2b either there's no more b2c it's h2h right now 
<laughs> and uh, when you were speaking, John, about the client relationship or consultant relationship, that will have to change too. Uh, because it's it's impossible to ask a consultant to work 40 hours and hours when we have eight clients. That's, That's another... true. If if you have multiple clients, yeah. I, I just want to point out real quick, I think you know, you touched on it, Michael, on uh, on on a mindset thing. And and the only thing I can come up with right now that's evident that's changing is uh, the level of trust even because that had been a barrier uh, a long time for many years in any place that I had tried personally to coach uh, leadership to allow uh, people to work from home even though they were crying for it too like in the surveys and everything now they were forced to do it so does it mean that they trust them if they're still paying them right Twitter already uh, went ahead and 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 called it you know and said that's it you know we're doing it yeah. but do we go back to those leaders tomorrow and say look if you if you still don't trust them why were you paying them during covid so you're you're talking out of both sides of I, your I, mouth, think, right? I think I think I think John right. you're bringing up an awesome yeah. point that yeah. the, you're, you're kind of it's more I won't say an old guard but that kind of like command control I have to be your boss looking overview versus if we take the true spirit of agility right the true measure of progress is like working results, working solutions, you know, working software, whatever it is. So if you work three hours or eight hours a day, I don't care. Did you get it done? You got it done. Great. You know, it's, and if in those eight hours you spend two hours looking after your kids or looking at, did the job get done and, and okay. did you collaborate? Who, you know, that's, that's what should count. So I love the fact that you bring up the trust factor, especially yeah. under this human thing. Like if you think of Pat Lencioni, right. And the, you know, the five dysfunctions of a team, the very first dysfunction is lack of trust. And if I don't trust you, everything else in terms of accountability results, it doesn't happen. So awesome. I love the fact that you brought that up. So we might have a new guest on our panel. Her name is Anna Ines Burton. Let me see if uh, I'm doing multitasking right now, guys. So, That's okay. Task so she switching. Was, she was running to us on, on Facebook and I said like, why don't you join us? Because we need the feminine uh, part of it like in the, to exchange because the only, uh, only masculine part could be wrong in this uh, spectrum of work. And uh, actually I had like three women panelists. They didn't show up, unfortunately. So I hope that she'll be able to join us. So while she coming in uh, to share with us as a 10 year Scrum Master, and she will introduce herself. Um, so guys, would you like to uh, continue to explore a bit on the human factor before going to the autonomy? I think uh, this conversation is interesting because you, you mentioned some points and Le Leandro, uh, oh, if you'd like let's, to react. Let's go into it. Let's go into autonomy, and autonomy is going to hit the human factor anyway, so we can yeah. get into. Just one thing before before we finish the human part. Um, when John was uh, talking about this difficult with the leadership to they hire an agile coach and they don't want to go with with what the agile coach says. I remember working with a scrum master that had a poster just behind him in his office, uh, "Adapt or Die," and <laughs> it was for for Darwin. <laughs> You had Darwin sign, sign that. Uh, I think that's the moment that that makes a lot of se sense right now. Uh, oh, the, there's another good saying that I like to use. You know, smart people learn from their mistakes. We hear that. But yeah. wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And by hiring me, the consultant, I'm telling you what other people got wrong. You, you choose if you want to be smart or wise. Your choice. Yeah, but that's another good learn. saying. You're going to learn one way or the other. <laughs> I think on that topic of like consultants, I think one of the things, again, maybe it's just that agile mindset. Uh, we're not even perceived as consultants. Like when we're really integrated in the team, we're another team member, we're, we're adding value. And sure, yes, there's the whole consulting contracting side, especially now in the in this COVID environment where, you know, there a lot of companies are consulting and saying, hey, we got to at least at bare minimum, keep our own employees and consultants are sometimes perceived almost as like a nice to have. It's amazing when our clients are saying, no, 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 uh, they're not a nice to have. They're an integral part of our team. And if you take them out, it's like you're ripping out the, the fabric of our team and the, the productivity and our innovation. So it's really, it's cool to what you said, John, in terms of, you know, the, you, yes, you bring in that expertise and that those lessons learned from other environments, 
and then you become a real integral part of that team. Yeah. Welcome to Anna. Hello, guys. Thank you for inviting uh, me. I was welcome. watching you. It's <laughs> a pleasure to welcome you into this uh, the speak easy of agility on Zoom. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, it's nice that you did a virtual session. Okay, so would you like to to, to say something about uh, this uh, human aspect of the answering the question of our agility could actually uh, help us? Uh... Alexandre, wait up a second. Yeah. In the agile spirit, we have a new team member. Yes. Can she introduce herself? Can you integrate her into our team? Come on, be a good coach. Yeah, thank I you, do thank you, coach. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh... to be coached. Yeah, I'm, I'm Anna. I'm um, Scrum Master right now of three teams. Uh, I actually have 10 years of experience in the IT industry, but not as a Scrum Master. As a Scrum Master, around uh, five years. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, I have been listening to you guys. Um, I, I, I draw the little one of uh, focus on priorities on organic growth. Oh. Because uh, I don't know how are you guys dealing with this, but... Uh, for example, myself talking to my boss, which is the, the owner of the company, um, I, I, I see that uh, he's still focusing on all the little details that we used to be focusing on before. And sometimes it's like, let's focus on the new priorities, like the new things that uh, we need to take care of now, like the culture of the company, for example. Uh, that it's very difficult to sustain or or, or, or continue with that with that culture story uh, at distance. So I don't know. That's my feeling that we need to. So so when you mention organic growth, Anna, what yeah. part of the growth is organic in terms of in the work environment, the culture you're talking about? No, my point there is that uh, let's say thinking about the. The, the very beginnings of, of, of the Scrum Manifesto, if you think the purpose was to build a product as a, as a plant, you know, like a vegetable, like uh, from the seed and going, growing up based on that. And now we are kind of in that moment when the, 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 the plant and the flowers were cut, you know, <laughs> we need to start over, over again. And we need to find those new like water or ingredients that we need to input or, 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 or pour into this new plant that we have. And I don't know, in my company, I mean, we are struggling with a little bit with that. I, I, like, that that, I like that analogy of that growth. Like, you know, like Lisa, Lisa Adkins often talks about, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the agile values kind of being the roots of the tree and then the fruits are the benefits of that. So I like how, A, you're saying the tree's been cut. We have to kind of replant yeah. and mm -hmm. think about what that is. So I really like how we go back again to principles and values. Yeah. Exactly. And this is what I say. I don't like the term new normal as we could do a new new whatever we want, actually, mm -hmm. creating a smaller work, uh, work world and so on. So amazing. So, when, so we, when we drive down a road, do we look in the rear view mirror to see where we were? Or do we look outside to see in front of us to see where we're going? Both. Yeah. A little bit of both. To quote my very yeah. philosophical Greek father, <laughs> know where you're going. You have to know where you come from. <laughs> that is correct. Very it's good. Correct. <laughs> but uh, I will quote, uh, I don't know who, but uh, Carpe Diem, it's also important <laughs> to be in the focus and in the moment. But again, I will look back and I will make plan forward, but not plan. I will continuously planning, right? Yep. Something like this. All right, guys. So, Leandro, final thought on the human interaction factor. Uh, would you all agree that we start uh, brainstorming on the autonomy? Yeah, let's go to autonomy. Okay, so let me show you some kind of uh, the French forum uh, takeaways. We add our subtopic of it by bringing to you. And let me know if you see it big screen right now. Yeah, we can see yes? a PDF. Okay. So autonomy. The question we try to answer here is how to help the creation of an autonomy. Okay, there's a typo here, I'm sorry. Autonomous team to offer more innovation and value. And um, some of the outcomes from the French Forum of, of April 15 was uh, uh, efficient team, the trust that we actually already talked on the uh, human factor, uh, being more local, being more entrepreneurial, 
uh, team community uh, educates self. Probably that's the thing that she wore. Uh, the food sovereignty, uh, sovereignty of staff, uh, free will, uh, surveillance, and the blue card. Blue card is something in Quebec, uh, John, because I think you're the only one who is not a Canuck or not even a French Canuck. But I'm not a Canuck. The, the government not myself. Are uh, yourself? Wait, no. Are you in Montreal, Anna? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, so you probably all heard about the Legault uh, Prime Minister starting yeah. an initiative of the blue card. I translated blue card, Michael. I know if you agree, it's the le panier bleu. Uh, actually, actually I, I was very disappointed at some point because I thought that it will be more like uh, the new Amazon for Quebec and Canada or something more interactive for the small business. But mm -hmm. finally, it's just a database or it's just a catalog of, of small business. That's kind of cool, but you will need more development. But I know, of course, with the French panel, we, we talked about this, but these are the kind of idea that I um, propose. And uh, anyone who would like to jump, again, it's a crosstalk. It's a, it's a yeah. brainstorming. And I'm here to yeah. facilitate. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk something about that. Um, and when Anna uh, brought her, her thought, I was really thinking about, about this question here. I see our management or traditional management schools, they see pretty much everything like an industrial way of building stuff. So you have a machine that works five hours a day, should produce 25 something, right? Um, so this is how pretty much most part of the managers work right now um, and how they learn to do that. It's not that's their fault. It's the, or the way we were, they were taught and the way do we, even us here, I think, Looking here by by your face here, just guessing your age. I think some people had modems, right? <laughs> so that's the way even us were taught to think about management. Um, but what happens, especially uh, for uh, for the um, for the software industry, we have creative work, right? You cannot get a programmer and say, "Hey, build me 100 line of code in one hour." It's impossible, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, the guy needs to think about it, needs to be inspired about it, needs the right environment to produce. So, yeah, I think we need to move from, I think right now it's showing that we need to move a bit from this industrial mentality. Okay, I have this amount of hours for something and we have this on out, this quantity and output for, okay, that's, I give you the autonomy to give me, give this job done. Just tell more or less how long you need for that. But people need the autonomy for that. Not only, okay, you have this amount of time, pay you eight hours a day, produce me that, these eight hours. More, okay, give not only autonomy, but autonomy with some accountability. People work pretty well with that. So I, I want to qualify a little bit, like, what do we mean by team here? And what what do we need? I, I could create a team out of anything. And, and uh, are we talking about a development team? Are we talking about a cross-functional business team? Are we talking about, uh, you know, anything in general? But the, the point is that the best way to make a team autonomous is to give them enough incentive to be autonomous. And I can give a quick example. You can tell the, the leader the, of the team to, to leave go on vacation and tell the team, uh, by the way, uh, if you want your bonuses, if you want your whatever it is, you got to figure it out without me and make sure we have at least as much productivity because I'm going to be going on a vacation on a cruise for two months and uh, you won't see me. I don't think you want to be going on a cruise right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> well you know, it, 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 a leave of absence or whatever it is. So the person could end up as a COVID case or whatever it is. You can't assume that even your boss is gonna be around, <laughs> right? But why do we have a dependency? I think that the, the, the struggle is that when we're not autonomous, it's because we're dependent on a boss or, or some leader. And I, I think that's the point I'm trying to get to down low. What are those hooks that are still connecting us to mm. a dependency or or being forced uh, to, to, to not be autonomous? Let's say if it's a top-down, uh, command control thing. So how do we unhook that and just say, all right, you guys have it, you're responsible, go figure it out, get it done. And they do it. Very interesting. 
Yeah, but I think it goes back to that human discussion we had about trust, right? Because I think at the end of the day, the empowerment we see in autonomous teams starts off with the trust of saying, hey, we're going to give you the space to work in, but and we trust, you know, we're, you're going to get things done, right? So, uh, you know, the, the, there was, uh, you know, the, for me, this is going to be a, if there's going to be one thing that's going to change because of when we talk about post-COVID is that, um, autonomous teams and kind of more this decentralized decision making is is going to become and I know uh, Alexander's like the, a bit the new norm or the the new way uh, of working. Uh, the, the, this is going to be there was actually um, and if yes. you guys saw I don't know if you guys saw this last month there was a article in Forbes that actually was talking about post COVID and saying I think the article was like why the eye mindset is going to be yeah. then then the, get to get us through COVID from, from and Steve Dinning right. Yes, exactly. And Actually, one of the thing- his first question was, will only the agile people and business to survive the post-COVID? Mm-hmm. Because that's the thing. For me, I've been doing it for 23 years this year. Okay, I was a scrum master back in the 2000s, even before the manifesto. And <laughs> I mean, like, at some point, like, being agile, it's for me, it's a no-brainer at some point. And I don't want to brag about this, but the thing is, a true business agilist, a true lean thinker, it's already something like we, we for us, it's, 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 it's a great opportunity, this acceleration with that crisis that make people think and rethink the way they should work smarter and together. And uh, the autonomy factor, John, I like uh, the point you and the question you ask to all of us, because uh, my struggle and especially the last five, six years with all this management 3.0, huh, the conscious capitalist from Richard Barrett in Oxford, and this uh, conscious leadership of, uh, of Stéphane Leblanc here, an ex Bombardier guy who is right now uh, championing the fact that we have to transform manager up into leader, okay? So there's a lot of, we are agile coach and scrum master. Scrum master is more like a team coach, they say, but I mean, for me guys, uh, Leandro and Anna are coaches because with enterprise scrum anyway, we simplify the word as coach and owner. That's it. There's no like product uh, scrum, what, what have you. But the, the key thing here is, is being autonomous is like Steve Jobs used to say, if I hire you, Michael or John or Anna for your skills, for your talent, I should listen to you. So that's the first, it's, it's come with the trust probably, challenge me. I'm just here to drop some ideas here, but. Yeah, but that's that famous Steve Jobs uh, quote, right? I don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. I hire smart people so they can tell me what to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. goes back to that that autonomous and kind of trusting and 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 I don't want to have a team of 10 Michael Dallas's. I want to have, I want to have an Anna, a John, a Leandra. I want to have different, like kind of like this panel, right? You want to bounce yeah. different ideas off of each other. Yeah, to make me see, like you see, this is what side for you, and it's not for. So, so if we are a team, a cross-functional team, we're gonna have a different idea of the product to, or the outcome or the solution we should build to please our customer. It's people first, and all the rest after. I think. So being autonomous is having people that uh, a lot of people in the management 3.0. They make me laugh sometimes. They say like they have a, a lot of concept and they make us play things and stuff. But what is concrete? When is actually the walk, the talk about all these uh, uh, agile tour you were speaking before and all these things and the scrum gathering? We, I should uh, actually today was supposed to be the last day of the scrum gathering in Manhattan. And uh, so I'm really, I'm really happy. And I thank you guys to be with me to make me uh, live a, a scrum gathering type of thing. <laughs> uh, I, and I miss New York because I walked there. Me too. So I, I miss it. Like I miss my friend there and they, I know they struggle and stuff, but I'm sorry about this uh, <laughs> emotional uh, parenthesis. So, so let's get back to, so autonomy, is, isn't it something that about like empowering people for real, uh, making them like when we facilitate a working agreement for a release, for example, in a software development company, isn't it all about that? Making them choose the way they want to work, the way they, as you mentioned in the previous table, like uh, empirism, we should get back empirism into uh, Scrum and Agile, right? So yeah, I think there's a, of- there's a give and take because so many teams uh, that we see from time to time, uh, for some reason, have an order taking mindset where they are waiting for instruction. Mm. that is a very difficult team to say we're going to make autonomous because eventually 
if they don't have the inner drive or another one of those quotes from those books of the dysfunctions of the team and uh, where, where it says you have to be hungry, right? Uh, I, I think Lencioni said that one, but uh, if, if you don't have that hunger, uh, any attempt to make a team autonomous is going to fail. Like if that team is not hungry to be autonomous, if they want to be dependent. Uh, you, so you have to understand their psychology and see if it's fixable or not, like uh, to, to get them to the state where they can be autonomous. Yeah, but, but if you think about what Alexander said before, right? Yeah. Like, yes, talking about autonomous teams, but how could it be a driver to kind of promote better innovation and, and value, right? So that's how you have to make the link to the team. What I'm saying is, you're not going to come in and force a team and say, hey, guys, be autonomous or be. Yeah. You're absolutely right. They might not even have the psychological maturity or readiness for that. So as coaches, we get in there to help. But the link we make is, how are we as a team? The reason we're, first of all, we're a team is because we're working towards a common objective so how do we show that hey by working in a more autonomous way we can actually get better value deliver better you know collaboration or better uh, so yeah I, I love this little thing that uh, that alexander's showing here from the human needs and the motivations right so oh, is it working because i don't see on my feedback screen yeah, yeah no it's working really well it is now yeah okay so this this is actually built by uh, mr richard barrett i don't know if you guys know that gentleman he was once the head of the um, uh, World uh, Bank, and he's a teacher at the Oxford University in Economy. And he created the uh, kind of organization called uh, Conscious Capitalism. And he says, like, uh, we have the Mar uh, Mars Law. Correct me, please. Yep. I'm not the Mars Law yeah, Pyramid. Uh, Mars Law Pyramid. Ma kind of everyone is knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Then us, as agile people, agilista, we are, we should be here in the transformation, right? Because we help people going through. And of course, um, so we go from physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. I put it there because maybe to inspire us on developing, as, as you mentioned, John, and I like it because again, and as coaches, as Michael also emphasized, we should listen to the needs of our team, organization, or anyone we coach, or we try to facilitate their way of doing something better. But of course, if someone tell me like, I would like to be more agile, I would say, okay, so uh, what's your context? What's your business context? What's your technological context? Who is in your team? And I don't know, but I will, I will start using some kind of psychology like this or, and this is actually, it's a test that I provide to some of my clients from leadership on the C-level up to the programmer and the designer. And they have to fill up. It's really simple. It's keywordings and it will scale them and to these two pyramids. So more you have into a team, people uh, here and the making a difference and transformation, of course you go at building autonomous team and you help them do that. But if you have people who are in the lack of self-esteem, for example, or they don't like to work uh, in collaboration in their relationship, for example. So what do you do as a coach? How do you actually build the autonomy? So it goes back to what John has uh, mention i think uh, i don't want to paraphrase you but so these are the dimension actually yeah well i mean the, the, there's always got to be something that motivates someone uh i i knew a case of, of one guy i i couldn't do it i know that he, he would drive two and a half hours from northern or central northern new jersey to philadelphia in traffic each way and uh, at, at some point after a year, uh, I was, because he wouldn't say much. He was a QA guy. So he just QA, QA. Like that's all he did. Very, very interesting existence. But at some point, he, he actually admitted that the two and a half hour commute was his time to be alone. And it's sad, but he, he was away from work and away from his wife at the same time. Uh, so it, it's a sad way of, of saying it, but you know, we, we, we looked at this guy and said, okay, well, something's wrong. So we, we gave him the option of and experimented and said, look, if we give you back five hours of your life every day, two and a half hours each way, uh, can you do QA from home? 
he actually did more and more for us because he was happier and, and he was more autonomous and he didn't have to come to work. So sometimes you have to go deep into the, you have to start knowing the individual that doesn't quite fit in one of these molds and, and, and you have to think about what can motivate them. And deep down, most people will uh, give you something in return uh, for something that you want from them. So uh, the, you, you just have to find what that is in every person. And once in a while, th there's nothing you can do, but in, in the majority of problem cases, there's got to be something. You just have to look for it. So I just wanted to bring that example up. Anyone? Cross talk again. Leandro and... Uh uh no, guys, I, I just wanted to say that uh, I will have to, to leave you because I have uh, French lessons. You know, it's oh. Montreal, so we need Parle to français. speak French. <laughs> but uh, it was great, and I will watch the video once it's uploaded. So thank yeah. you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you, thank you for, for, your, for your passage, and uh, that, take care. That, and see why, you at the Scrum Beer. That's why I gave you, you, look at the beautiful background. That's why I gave you the beautiful <laughs> Montreal background. Yeah, yeah, I hope we can meet in person one day. Okay. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. Right. Bonne journée. Bye. Au revoir. À la prochaine. Uh, à la prochaine. À la prochaine. Chris, you should go to that meetup. Uh, I know. Meet, I'm missing you know? out on the French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. A Scrum uh, French learning group, apparently, uh, that exists. Okay. So, um, I like what you showed in the, saddle, the, in the levels of motivation there and what John brought up about we need to work in an individual there. Um, I want to bring that for the perspective that I, I saw in some teams that sometimes we have teams, they have no purpose, which relates to what Michael said before, they need a common goal to work together. And I remember one company, well, I just started as a scrum master, I asked, okay, what, what is the goal of this team? What's the vision for this team? If your CEO comes here, why are we putting money in these guys? Why? What he would say, and the manager replied, I don't know. I just had some red count. I don't want to lose my budget. I created this team. And they were working pretty much solving bugs and no sense stuff. Nobody was motivating that team. Um, so we have also this aspect in there, right? Um, it was, we modified a uh, life of life. Well, this team was five people. So five people were there working together affecting their family's life and everything, but it was a motivation of one manager that had a head count and didn't want to lose that for the next year. So sometimes it goes broader than that. So if, when we had this kind of situation where everybody was there in the survival level, hmm. how we can bring up to, to a higher level than, than the survival. Interesting. Yeah. I'm seeing this a lot of the, uh, on this topic of autonomy. I, I'm seeing this both at the client, but we're seeing it at the local municipal government level where you're seeing that um, like in, in a COVID environment, right? There's a lot of challenges. Like I'll, I'll give you an example. One of my clients, um, what, he, uh, what they've implemented once a week, they've actually, uh, if you think about it, like a, a daily standup or whatever, he's doing a weekly standup just for half an hour, we're about in that team. I think we're about almost 30 people, maybe about 25 people. And it's just to talk about COVID related topics. Uh, you know, uh, how COVID has actually impacted us. Uh, we had uh, some people that have unfortunately lost people because of it. And they kind of, it's almost like a group therapy, right? And it's incredible how that aspect has actually increased the autonomy and the connection and the productivity because all of a sudden you're, again, you're not seeing just the, so, so if you think about it, it's like, wait up, what does that have to do with uh, the objective we have as a team? But to John's point before, that's building a certain level of trust. Like, wow, um, you know, there's a, I'm sure you guys have seen that thing on Netflix. You know, Brene Brown talks about vulnerability, right? And kind of the old mindset is, or if you're being vulnerable, it's perceived as a weakness. But here's people being vulnerable. And it's actually perceived as a strength in the team. It's like, wow, you're showing like, you know, if you think about like the XP values of courage and, you know, you're you're showing the courage to say, you know what, uh, I'm, 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 I'm in trouble or I'm hurting. Can you help me? Or, you know, so 
So I see to see it like that uh, at the team level, and and look at like you know uh, you know uh, Alexandre talked about uh, um, Michel Lego, for example, here in Quebec and in Canada is how you know as a le- there's so much stuff that you, there's only so much you can do. You have to trust the cities and the municipalities to do their right. If you don't trust that and if you don't kind of decentralize and allow a certain level of, of autonomy, you're never going to get. You know, what's the objective is to keep our people safe and to, to keep our people healthy and working and whatever the case is, you have to have that, that trust, right? So I just love that thing that you mentioned, Leandro, and just made me think of that. But, but again, well, you, you mentioned the term like decentralized yesterday. I, I was with a meeting for one of my uh, artificial intelligence client working on um, no password or the what they call it the blockchain or the keychain so i know it's more for the maybe the last one but 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 again the discussion they had together the engineer and so on that was so in line with what just you just said because they said like we cannot actually when you mentioned earlier i think it was uh john or leandro about uh, uh, who knows really uh, about covid or maybe it was you michael Uh, who knows about COVID? Uh, who knows about how to actually? Is it uh, two meters, six meters? Is it uh, transmission? This yeah, we're we're, le- we're learning, right? I exactly. mean, look at right now what they're finding with little children. Right? At first, COVID was just oh, it's just it's impacting older, but now we're seeing stuff with how it's impacting children. It's like, oh, okay. you know, I, I just you... wanna just wanna I don't wanna go through the COVID thing, even if it's that who bring us together to talk about what we're gonna do after the, this pandemic. But for me, the point. To, to make with the decentralized thing because the when we talk about autonomous team organization or town and the trust the trust I think for me it should be like uh, the French panel actually addressed it by drawing a, a upside down pyramid okay where actually if you really have we are like I don't want to go too much politics so you stop me anytime you think I could like I think but Uh, what we saw also with my lawyer's firm that I help working in, in some things, they show that uh, all the Nordic countries such as Sweden and Norwe- Norway, uh, Netherlands, they didn't have a big confinement like us. They had like the, the social physical, uh, excuse me, the physical distancing type of thing, uh, gathering of people less than 50. And all the, all the curves, because unfortunately here in, with Kumo, New York and Lego, Quebec, they are just looking at the, uh, the debt curve with a percentage based on only people who actually are positive. This is wrong at some point. So being autonomous and trusting our authorities, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not having like, it should be, we should be responsible as citizen, as people part of the community. First and foremost, we don't have to get uh, Dr. Fochi or Dr. Aruda here telling us to wash our hands, to cover our face if we are sick. And it's getting back to the uh, human experience also. Uh, all in the world, before COVID-19, I, I saw some of my client, okay, manager, telling over the phone or even like by texto, oh, we don't care if you have the flu, come and work because we have this target to reach. Excuse me? Now, will they rethink this? Because for me, it's not like this one is very viral. Okay, fair enough. It's a pandemic. Okay, fair enough. But even the regular flu could be a pain in the ass. You know, I'm a big, hyperactive, dynamic, sporty guy. And I got three years ago, I got some kind of a flu that knocked me down for four days in my bed. And yeah, my no. client crying about, like, oh, you should be came to the office and then I contaminate everyone. I mean, like. That, that should be stopped too. And being autonomous, it's, it's the self-esteem, uh, the self-preservation of us and others, I think. That just want to throw yeah, it there because think... if we if we as coaches and project manager, we try to help organization to build around centralized stuff. And I don't want to nag about safe, but safe it's pretty much doing this. Uh, unless on the other, more decentralized and even the subsention. Huh? Subsention is the dynamic of interrelation of real smaller team that could collaborate with other teams. So autonomy for me, it's all this dimension that this crisis should make us not individualist, but working more into like, okay, I, I know what I do. John, John, you were going to say something? Yeah, I'm an adult, so. I think the you made a very interesting point just now about management or old 
thinking of leadership saying, I don't care if you're sick, come in to work. I, I believe going forward, uh, it's going to be very hard to, from an HR perspective, to justify that kind of action, even at the highest levels. And I don't know that it can ever be uh, as prevalent as it has been in the past. You, those cases, I think, because we were talking about how things will be different going forward, that specific example is is likely to be a taboo uh, going forward. It's, it's not just going to be taboo, John. It's going to yeah. be illegal. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, yeah. if they don't take it to that yeah. point, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and the other word I love that Alexandre brought up is that word community. That's the, that word I think is changing now because, like, even now we talk about COVID and masks and stuff like that in an autonomous environment and in self-empowered teams, you have that sense of community that uh, if you suffer, I suffer. So like exactly. this, this concept now of I'm not wearing a mask to just protect myself. I'm actually making a mask to protect you. Yes. To, 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 um, it's actually a selfless act that, hey, I'm thinking of you. And I think this 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 is a big mindset shift because we're all, this is like a, the me, 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 what's in it for me? Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden it's like, and, 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 and I love how some leaders are leading by example, which is a great agile thing. And some leaders aren't leading by example because they think they're above, mm-hmm. you know, this thing. And this, con- I love this aspect of community. And again, we're talking today about how agile can help us in a post COVID and during, I think that is one word that's going to redefine this concept of, you know, almost like that three musketeers mentality that all for one and one for all. Hey, we are in it together. Something started off in another part of the world and now it's 190 countries worldwide. And it's, we are really, it's one planet and we are breathing the, the same air and we, there's a virus that's impacting us. And for us to get out of this, we're going to need to do this together, right? Uh, there was a great art. I mean, look what's happening in the UK. There was a super article in the Euro Times that came out that basically said, hey, for us to get out of the pandemic, we need to have complete teamwork in this. And, you know, the frontline workers have to have the right equipment, right? Uh, who's going to get them the right equipment? Oh, the, uh, what's the supply chain together? Oh, the government has to support them. The people have to stay home. It's it's an it's an ecosystem. It's, it's a complete, uh, it's a system together, right? It's a holistic view. So this concept of autonomy works in this multi-team environment where every at the end of the day each family is a team each uh, neighborhood is a team each you know so uh, this, that's why if you really think of an agile mindset mm-hmm. that's why it, but you know, i think you know when people start to argue uh, they, oh this is not agile because uh, you don't leave the autonomy of those team to bring something into the thing is what we see is for me centralization concentration with decentralization and deconcentration really i don't know if because my background in physics i don't know if you guys uh, also study in, in science but the subsension you all aware about the subsension this dynamic of interrelation it's even like it's even like it's further away even from decentralization because decentralization at some point you could still have um something central but with subsension is just like it's kind of the, uh, if you look at the atom, okay? The atom are, are all go around, but they will regulate themselves. They will, at some point, they will br- get together to solve a kind of a problem, especially at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the proton level. So this is why when we apply this kind of dynamic of interrelation to the human, you could actually achieve to build more autonomous team, but also community, and then, you have to decide if, if it's working for them and their context, is it working for the other? Because why is in Sweden with 10 million people, they only have 3000 deaths with no confinement. And here in Quebec with 8 million point five people, we are almost at 4,000 deaths with not a strict confinement, but uh, a confinement, right? And restriction. So the thing is, it's nothing to do about the, who is smarter or who is more efficient. It's about the responsibility of self, I think. So how do you empower it with agility? Because agility should teach us, should show us with the values. Again, it's the value system and principle 
that should help us making decision to make sure that, you know, what's the principle again, Michael, about the uh, learning environment? But the these are, again? Well, the principle is we, we creating a motivated environment will bring the best results, right? So we want to make sure yep. that people are engaged and motivated and, uh, but uh, it's it's very look at uh, I don't know which politician was, but they said something. It's at the end of the day, all of these things are guidelines, right? If yeah. people are not going to do this, it it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, it's it's uh, so this is where again I go go back to that concept of community and understand that hey, what we do is going to impact, you know, uh, uh, and I think this is really going to change. I got to go back to the original point of this part is how is this going to help us create better, innovative, uh, you know, product? I think this is going to force us, you know, to um, to work in a much more collaborative, autonomous way to be able to produce. Uh, it's not even like a nice to have. It's going to become a must have. Yes. So yeah, I, awesome. I've, been, uh, I've been arguing for a few weeks now um, yeah, you know, because I know Michael mentioned earlier, you know, Greece and stuff like that, but things were, uh, you know, real tough. You needed a paper to go to point A to point B in case the police stopped you, that kind of thing. But I, I had this argument as to because if 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 people were autonomous, really, like self-governing, and in the sense and collaborative, there is no reason why outside of the big cities, the rest of Canada or the rest of the United States or the rest of Greece or all these villages that have one road in and one road out, uh, within 14 days, they couldn't all agree and say, look, uh, we're going to stay in our homes for 14 days. We're going to have a perimeter checkpoint one kilometer outside of the city on the two sides of the road. We're not going to let anyone in. We're not going to let anyone out. After 14 days, we're following the rules. If there's no incident of COVID, we agree that we will all go out. The stores will be open in our village. The churches will be open. Everything will be open because we have no cases and we have established ourselves as a unit, not just in isolation as a house. Mm -hmm. And then town to town, as they verify that there's no case in the next town we can have connection between two towns and then a county and then a state and work yeah, your way but, out of but, a problem but, but 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 john there's two points to that first of all yeah this virus knows no boundaries okay mm -hmm. and so like uh, uh, what you're talking about they've actually done here north of montreal we have some really nice towns in saint Sauveur and tremble north of montreal and yes. they pretty much have stopped people from montreal kind of going there there was or at least they did for a while yes. and so their covid thing is like super low but it just takes Two, three people to go up there and all of a sudden, boom, you have a hot spot. And so, uh, I mean, yes, yes. But if you have the checkpoint at the mm -hmm. checkpoint, you're intercepted at the checkpoint. They say, OK, you have a mask. Yes. You have gloves. Yes. Guess what? You're going to a house in the town. We're going to put tape outside your door. You're going to stay in there for 14 days. But actually, and you're not going to have contact. Right. I mean, the, these are. <laughs> don't come wasn't to the it, town. Wasn't it the way to actually address yeah. pandemic before? I mean, like uh, yes. you quarantine the sick and uh, you make sure the LT are not getting sick. And now yeah. it's like we quarantine everyone and we don't take care really of the sick. But there, there's I'm also sorry, no... it's a bit editorial, but that's but, what's happening sometimes. Not but there's also sick no... Sick. That's the point. But, but, but the point uh, is that, that if, if it's a 14-day quarantine in theory, why is it that we're all still in quarantine after after Six months, two, uh, two months or four months or three months, months yes. it's because we've gone back to this notion of all requirements up front. We're not doing the agile thing, right? Exactly. And that's what I wanted to say. The small towns at least could have broken out of this a long time ago. If oh, they yeah. wanted to. And, and, and uh, anyway, this is what's just... happening in New York, actually. I have friends in yeah. Rochester. They said, like, we don't have any cases. Why are we locked down in Rochester, for example? Chris, Leandro, you'd like to... Uh... Say something, Leandro. I think you you were you yeah. No, I was just thinking about all that you said, and it came to my mind that sometimes people uh, confuse the word autonomy with "I do whatever I want." <laughs> <laughs> right? There's some when you we say oh, you're autonomous, that means you have some responsibility in there. And when you brought up these examples from Norway and Sweden, especially in Sweden, uh, they didn't have to to lock down because they pretty much. Their way of living won't, would not change that much. 
like most part of people in Sweden, they work from home. Not most part, but I think it's like four of, it's really a high level, higher level yeah. than the other countries. Oh, the great center actually, Malmo, Stockholm, uh, Lund, because they, they want to reduce the, uh, the, the gasoline actually. That was the, yeah. the mindset for one of the reasons and how the commute and stuff. And now if you add it onto it, uh, the sickness or the, the health matter for sure. But, so uh, but people also have I, this sense of a community already. Yes, too. Right? A it's lot really more higher. stronger community sense in, yeah. in these countries. Yeah. And even if, if we, we don't talk much about East, uh, when I say the East, I mean like uh, Japan, uh, Korea, about South Korea, should I say? And uh, because they have another way of... Uh, of also uh, they have less cases or they have because they, they systematically test so they have a more sense of community than individuality i don't know But, if you check the case of taiwan yeah taiwan is uh, 26 dead yeah and they they were one of the first to be striked by the COVID, right and they just beside china actually some uh, some um world organisms just recognize them as part of China. Even they all, uh, the World Health Organization doesn't recognize Taiwan as a country. <laughs> Could you but they still that? have the, the major- The same with Singapore, I think. Happening. And the same yeah. happened with Singapore, but but these country, even like I have a friend in Thailand who I chat like almost, uh, we do a check-in every uh, two days. He's in Thailand, not in Bangkok, he's in um, Lompukum, it's a small town. Uh, and uh, he says like, uh, everybody here is treated. We are taking care of people who are sick with any SRAS, actually, not just the COVID-19. So here it seems like we don't know who has it and uh, we don't know who transmitted it. So anyway, I think we disgrace uh, and to more like <laughs> a debate of what will be the best way from the WHO through all those countries. But for me, what I see right now, especially with my international contact is, is those who are actually using uh, treatment at least or to, or they, they get a lot of tests, they identify those who are really in need, they seem to have a curve of uh, uh, intensive care and uh, even death very lower than those who are just confining people. So that's apparently, this is, will be probably one of the outcome. It's too soon to say that affirmatively, I think. But of course, John, I like what you said, like being agile in this context for our, uh, Uh, health uh, authority or government will have been to be a bit more uh, decentralized and more contextual to things and making sure that um, applying in the context of of a, what do they call it in English uh, is it the same Michael uh, le, le propagation communautaire uh, it's, um, community yeah, yeah. Com community Com spread or community, community spread can... so so of course uh, why people are surprised then New York City and Montreal are the hotspot. Hello, we are living on top of each other. Yes. How do you preserve the physical distance and so on? So, I mean, like, this is nuts. This is nuts. Of course, I guess PZ or uh, somewhere upstate New York, uh, there's this case because people are living in the country apart from each other and they don't have to, you know, so. Anyway. I also, on this concept of autonomy, and I remember when I was actually, I, I listened in a little bit to the, um, the, the French version of this thing. That one of the things that I like to discuss, and I see it more and more, even in some of my clients and in terms of innovation, is this entrepreneurial spirit, spirit yeah. right? So a big aspect of autonomy is um, having, um, you know, the teams empowered to think outside the box right and to kind of come up with so uh, it's amazing how you speak, here in Canada you hear about companies have completely repurposed themselves you know to, to, if it's to create PPEs or to whatever the case is I mean you have hockey companies that were making you know hockey face shields for the ice but they're been doing it now for the front line or they're making garments car, garment companies are making so I, I there, love a, I love a that aspect kind of theory here that start the movement of uh, doing the, sanitizer. hand sanitizer yeah so I love this aspect of of autonomy and agility in terms of this entrepreneurial spirit and kind of that lean startup Uh, approach to things. So I don't know if you guys have seen that. I've seen that within our, even within our, like within our community, but even with our clients, how they're forcing to, the, the people to think outside the box. Yeah. So there you see that kind of entrepreneurial. Yeah. This is exactly what it's happening, actually. Even at the early phase of the lockdown here in Canada in mid-March, I saw it pretty much like 
those more agile, exactly as the, the article we mentioned before in Forbes by Steve Denning. Actually, guys, if you didn't read it, go read it. It's, it's awesome. Because when he has the question, is agile people will survive it? It's not even just surviving. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's being like actually um, I think creative. What I what I liked it's, it's, a lot about what I liked about that article is not just they actually talk about from a mental health side. We talked about human before is, you know, having uh, like, for example, if you have like a daily stand up or uh, uh, these la cadence, the rituals that we have in agile, you know, from a uh, from a doing agile actually gives us some kind of, um, uh, uh you know, that, that aspect of ritual gives us this positive mindset, you know, like, like for myself, even working from home every day, I still, you know, get up, I'll shower, I'll shave, I'll get dressed, I'll go into my work office, I still keep a certain ritual. And so that article brings up how that's actually yeah. an important aspect of agile mindset that, 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 that relentless kind of improvement, but also kind of keeping certain things uh, ritualized. You see I have it. a question for you, um, and I would like to debate just if we can get like just five minutes. How far is the entrepreneurial mindset from the agile mindset? One time, one of the coaches I worked with said the idea of agile in the end, if you want to get out that really simple, is just to make each one in a company or in a team to think like they own the business and they serve in a client. So in your vision, how far it would be the agile mindset from the entrepreneurial mindset? Well, if you look at the most successful, some of the most successful agile companies in the world, right? You think of the Googles, the Atlassians, you know, the link, all these companies, they okay. all allow and give time once a, like one day a month to allow people to come up. Hey, you know, some of the best Google products out there was just created by, you know, internal people that had some ideas. And they, so they, they allow, they, they, they promote that kind of entrepreneurial spirit. And of course they reward them say, Hey, if we get something out and we productify it, you'll benefit from it, but they do it. You know, if you think of that Dan pink um, mind, that mastery autonomy and purpose, right. They love that, that, that purpose and kind Kind of saying, hey, what's our purpose as a company to kind of get these innovative products? So entrepreneurship and, and a lean agile mindset, I think, go hand in hand because they both experiment, right? You have some idea, you want to, you know, validate that hypothesis, get it out there. Does it work? Great. Preserve. If not, pivot. So I think they go kind of hand in hand. The challenge is, and I think uh, one thing that, you know, Alexander and I, we work together and as agile agnostic people, I, I don't like this robotic, you know, do the step one, step two uh, met methodology stuff. And that's where you kill this entrepreneurial, Sorry, agile, yeah. you know, this agile spirit. So mm -hmm. I have no problem having, you know, like I mentioned before, like ritual stuff like that, but we do that because it, it supports the objective of adding more value and supporting our customers, not because we, oh, it's a process and we have to follow it, right? Individuals, interactions over processes and tools. It's the very first value of Agile. So I don't know if that answers a little bit your question, Leandro. No, answers, yeah. I just would like to compliment what you said. If we have, when we have a methodology, something really strict, we're not, we're not being Agile, right? And yeah. when we look to the Agile Manifesto, the really first sentence there, we are uncover better ways of developing software by doing it and helping exactly. others do it. We, we are uncovering. So there is no methodology, no, so it no place should for already be It should already be a, a starter, a spark of being innovative and creative. Yeah. So if you stop it with any structure or process, and this is why also uh, Jeff uh, Schrauber, Ken, uh, excuse me, Jeff Schrauber. Oh my God, Jeff Sutherland. Oh God. You, you, you combine Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber. <laughs> Jeff Schwaber, and it's Ken Sutherland. <laughs> I know. Oh my God, maybe I'm getting tired. But the, you, you yeah. got me, guys. It's uh, time for it's, dinner. It's, time for dinner. <laughs> time for dinner. Bring me the turkey. Okay. So, but the thing is, they they always like taught me, and even Mike Beetle even more. Uh, this aspect of, uh, of, of if, you, if you want to empower people of being entrepreneur. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, I, again, last week, a team that I had, uh, they were permanent worker and they are become a consultant, consultant designer, consultant developers, because they have a new relationship now with, with the, the software company they work for. Is it because of COVID? Of course it is. That's the kind of spark or the reason it, but they all agreed that they will stay like this forever now. 
not just for the lockdown period, even after. So they decide, so it's pushed them to actually accelerate. Th these are notes we had from other farm that I participate. So, you know, autonomy also, we, we didn't discuss it, but it's hyper-local economies. Okay, the autonomy is not inside of the human experience and people. It's also about how we should be autonomous in our food production and even our, our medical supplies or what have you. So it's really nice to see distillery uh, switching from vodka to sanitizer. Okay, good. But then after, how do you make sure that any other goods are produced with a range of, of, of traveling to your customer more autonomously? See what I mean? So, so I example, if, if I put orange juice with my hand sanitizer, is that a screwdriver? I just want to know. Is that <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, you don't, you don't need to switch it from vodka to hand sanitizer. I think it'll work. <laughs> yeah, me too. But apparently it's uh, some kind of ingredient that make they base on the alcohol or other factor because vodka is from uh, potatoes sometimes or whatever. I, I, so. I think it's just you need an ID for the vodka and it's okay to buy at the store if without an idea if it's ha called hand sanitizer right <laughs> exactly but you know how do i kill my not the flu but the cold when i start to have a cold you start drinking clorox no <laughs> jagger master jagger master my friend the good jagger master from germany that's Kills good huh? with, with a lot of ginger i put so, ginger in it and i drink it so anyways leandro so i wanted to respond one difference between i i think in general the, the startup company and the agile team is almost like to what michael said it's very similar but there's one difference uh if you fail as a startup company you're broke and in debt and uh there's there's a lot more at stake at that hmm. from that mindset right so you have to be you know because if you're just an agile team that happens to experiment and fail the budget might be coming from somewhere somewhere else you're not really interested in that as much so it's it's a matter of how much skin you got in the game at that point exactly. Yeah, but that's that's where you want to have that mindset like even yep. before covid um like the uh, the um, there's a lady actually she was the head of the the cbc here in canada she ended up becoming the ceo of this little company you might have heard it called wikipedia uh she started off it was a couple of million dollars she made it a billion dollar company and one of the it was her name is sue garner one of the very first things she did and she put this huge like uh, board and the entrance nobody here will ever get fired for making mistakes it's a it's like a culture where it's like we, if we want to make some good omelets we're going to need to break some eggs it's going to happen so that that so in that case there the risk is a little bit mitigated from what john said is because it's kind of in the dna of the company that hey we're, we're going to have this experimentation i i try to i try to show that to all my clients saying is if you go with a cookie cutter solution that worked in another, I, like, for example, look, as consultants, I bring all these best practices, but it's a best practice somewhere else. In this environment, we're going to experiment. We're going to adapt it. We're going to make it fit into your environment. You can't just go ways. in. Yeah, you know, so so you can't. So this is a, you know, to, again, part of that spirit of entrepreneurship. I think it has to be built in. And, and that we go back to trust and servant leadership. Mm -hmm. The management has to say, you know what? We're going to trust that and we're going to give you the, the time and the latitude to break some eggs, to, 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 to figure things out, because we're going to know that the productivity is going to go down, but then it's going to go up when we start seeing the benefits of, this, of these new ways of working, right? So, Although to, to John's defense, I, I said like when you have a skin in the game, and I know because I'm an entrepreneur for the last 25 years, so I have a lot of failure, a lot of winning, and you know, you probably heard about the fuck it up night, the gathering of people who will go up front and talk about their failure. Yes, it's nice to fail. It's nice. And then you get up and you start over and that's okay. But at some point, uh, money, except for if you're working in a central bank, you're not creating it out of thin hair, uh, your capital investment and so on. So, so I remember like Steve Denning, actually, when I had a workshop with him uh, five, six years ago in New York, I uh, used to teach us in the workshop that um, not only you have to create your customer and your user, by pleasing them and making sure they come back, but also uh, the concept of the unicorn and startup uh, world. When the startup after World War II came from a cycle of 50 years of business to seven years of business. So what is a unicorn, guys? You, you probably know. 
You know what's an unicorn? It's the, the fictitious animal, you mean, or just with the allegory? No, and business and startup oh, yeah, business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, what is it? So Anyone? that's that's the once in a lifetime thing that, that the fictitious thing that everyone thinks doesn't exist and then suddenly it shows up and then it becomes the model for everyone else. It it happened uh, uh, all of a sudden. In, in industry we use we use words like disruptor now, right? Yes. Um, yes. Airbnb comes in or Uber, Uber, yeah. Uber Travis. These guys, right? Yeah. It's not possible, it's not possible, and one day it's there, right? Like you're in front of you. And exactly, never, they're disturbing yeah. the thing, but that's the thing. The skin in the game, I like your expression, I like yeah. that expression. Because of course, like if you if you go to to people to investor, because I did that a couple of times, and they, they will challenge you and challenge you, and and this challenge to us entrepreneur, it's more than autonomy and trust. It's about like okay, so if I get this uh, one million, I have to transform it in three millions in two years. And it's not a real estate here. <laughs> I'm not even go there yet. Like. So, so that that these concepts are. This is why I think like this is true. Being agile doesn't mean that you're gonna make your first one billion dollar the first years of operation, especially if you uh, destroy a lot of eggs that you have to pay anyway to make your uh, your nice uh, omelet. But you have to balance this kind of thing. Are you freezing, Chris? Yeah, he, he looks cold, man. <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, enjoying the daylight and a little bit of sun while we can. Yeah, because uh, the sun goes down at eight o'clock now. Yeah, isn't there still snow up there or something? It snowed last week. We, yeah, uh, it's May, so there should be snow in Canada, right? No, oh, right now it's more like March. It feels like March twelve here. Then yeah, there you go. There's the the stereotyping. The stereotype. <laughs> Welcome to Meteo Media Agile. So, <laughs> so I'd like to finish uh, with a nice uh, Bob Dylan quote: uh, "You better start swimming, or you'll sink like a stone." I don't remember the song, but we took it from uh, one of his songs. Um, so here's the thing too: so being autonomous should make you swimming often instead of benching and sinking like a stone. Um, so what do you guys think? Uh, it's 7-11 right now. Time for pizza for the Canadian. They got me. 7-11, <laughs> no? <laughs> yes. Um, we'd like to touch a little bit about the, um, ensure that everyone can have a digital capacity to realize themselves or what to put in place really to support the two previous dimension with the digital transformation because the takeaways again, where, um, hold on a second. Yeah, where uh, reliable connectivity for telework and so on, e commerce, how could we speed up the e commerce, data storage, uh, the security, uh, digital identity, uh, e commerce for every small business. And right now, as I told you, it's been like the last five weeks. I'm mostly doing my earning right now by helping small business in my community of uh, getting Uber to skip the dish or the way to order through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like this. So I'm not even doing business agility uh, coaching because we realized that nobody would like to help uh, our Greek uh, restaurant uh, to order online. Just an example because I have two Greek gentlemen with me. So I'm just like, uh, that's I'm right. Like, yeah, no, but that's crazy because these guys are even if they are young like us they are still in the mindset that i have a couple of of waitress i have a delivery guy and the phone and but from I think there it's never been a priority for them what? right never been a priority for them it was no but it now it is always had a good reason to procrastinate that decision how to go digital exactly but that no but that's pretty amazing because i've got three guys three restaurants now they said like after this lockdown they will keep those uh functionality even if they say like, oh yeah, Uber charge us 30 percent of the meal, yeah. But they may one of the guy he make a calculation. He says like, I don't have to. It's it's it will cost less money for them to operate with Uber and skip the dish than having five uh, delivery guys, mm. even under the table, if I may say so. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So they for them the model has changed too. So so when you when we saying about the uh, the layoff earlier. So that will be another aspect. Now, they are addicted to the Facebook and the Uber way of ordering food and pickup and 
and delivery. I, I think this is going to become the way, uh, actually this past weekend, I don't know if you guys saw, there was a great interview by um, Eric Schmidt. He's the, uh, the former CEO of Google. And I loved, he actually, it was, a, it was a little bit in a COVID kind of context. And he says, COVID is actually not, like, I mean, obviously it's, it's a pandemic, but what it has exposed is we actually have an information problem. Yep. Right. Like you're talking before, John, about, oh, checking, you know, from one, you know, everything we talk, we talk about now from a COVID is uh, testing and contact tracing and treat all of these things have to deal with knowledge and information. And right now, what happens? Eh? We have a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk and information is low. And in a very agile kind of empirical way, right, as we get more and more information, uncertainty and risk is coming down. And I liked how um, he was he was talking about how, for example, like in some of the eastern countries in China, South Korea, they were like, I mean, they're vigilant in terms of their tracking of cell phones, right? If you get, they, they actually take your phone, they look at where you've gone, they notify the people. Now, obviously, let's say for in North America, because of privacy stuff, we're not going to have that. But Google and Apple actually created an app. It's a voluntary app. Uh, where people can uh, put their information, say this is, you know, you can share your G GPS information, but it's voluntary. But like you guys know, like any other tool, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If we yeah. don't have that information, it's not really going to help us, right? So Yeah, if, if I strap it on the back of a cat and let the cat run loose in the neighborhood, but, <laughs> you know. I'm sure I'm going to give him some. <laughs> you know. Anyway. But the last thing that I'm, I'm really sorry that we miss Will uh, for some technical yeah. reason, apparently, because uh, he's an engineer in that field of creating blockchain mm. to actually help the uh, healthcare authority, let's call them like this, to get data of, of uh, people movement, but by staying anonymous. That's really important key factor. So I don't know right now what uh, Apple and Google are doing. Uh, actually, I, I don't even like uh, went to iOS 13.5 uh, because apparently there's so much COVID stuff that uh, make myself now without, com because if I upgrade it, it's the same with Android, by the way, if you don't have an iPhone, same shit. Oh, sorry, I did the S word. Um, so All yeah, right. apparently it's so, okay. so. It's okay. It's English. Don't worry about. It. Yeah. Well, excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> so I should not do this, guys. I'm sorry. Like, uh, <laughs> um, but the thing is, uh, that's the thing. Is because just because you upgrade your devices, you just agree on a lot of stuff. And uh, so I mean, like, and what we propose here in the uh, Ville Intelligent, the smart city of Montreal, with data gathering, that will, uh, you know, Mike, it's gonna start. Huh? Next month, well, I think. Well, they've already, I mean, they've already started in terms of like you've seen, for example, even wider sidewalks. Like, I mean, it's going to actually become, you know, this this digital, oh, you know. The, oh, it, yeah, but wider sidewalks. I don't know about this, but I was thinking about like the data, the data exchange. Yeah. Because no, it, it's our data. So if, okay, I don't, I don't agree to share it with my name. I agree to share it for helping the community again, maybe to structure the stuff and so on. But it should be anonymous. And anyway, if it's not anonymous, as John says, I'll put it on the on the back of my rut trailer and uh, I will oh, but, ask him but, to but go but around. That, but yeah. as us kind of being agile coaches, uh, digital transformation, you know, is often um, uh, a vehicle uh, that that where agile is kind of is kind of a, a facilitator of a digital transformation, right? Look at, I mean, the, the the biggest one we actually see is obviously is in the banks, right? I mean, 15 years ago, I mean, you'd go into your bank, you might know your bank manager. Nowadays, like, I think it's like, it, the statistics are like 93% of all bank transactions are done either online through your phone, like digitally. It's like, yeah. you know, five to 7%, you actually have to go into a physical bank, which kind of goes back to the concept. Do we actually even need, like, if you think of like, ING or whatever, all these virtual kind of banks. But can I can I be very, very bad about this? Because you know, you and I we work for a lot of banks and not just for me, not just in Canada, I work also for bank in Britain. Well, you can United. be bad, but I might just but I mean the thing is they, they want to do digital transformation. That's the key point. By answering the question, all us, the agile community, and they should be there to help people going through and even organization in the bank right now. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but they are stubborn with their legacy system. They say they are digitally transformed, but they're not, okay? I'll give you an example, uh, a true life thing. I won't name the bank here because we're public. 
but uh, they asked me to go in the COVID time of lockdown. They asked me to go sign and pick up papers on Sherbrooke Street. Okay. And they should be all the best digital bank of Canada. Classic Desjardins. No, I don't want to name it. It's not Desjardins. It's red. It's a red bank. But please, I don't, I don't want to go there because I don't want to be sued for whatever comment or but the, you understand me so and 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 mike yeah but, but that's me, no, but, no, but, mike, uh, we, but the bank to defend the uh, like not just the bank or any client there's very few companies that are 100 percent digital in the example you gave it's an hr process it is uh, no, reason, no 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 but, it's, it's a again, customer wanna, service process yeah it's a customer okay but fine. the thing is the thing is even if they are doing of course a lot more things online they don't have the infrastructure to support it now Okay, so that's one thing. And they are not agile in the way they implement this. So what I'm saying is business agility should be the equation to help those bank and financial sector to be truly agile. And even though the digital people I work with right now, the supplier for those same banks, they're telling me that right now, you know, with the iPhone uh, 11, we have facial recognition because the um, digital identity this is even more powerful than the digital transformation. Digital identity, I have a lot of apps right now. I don't need password because password is not secure anymore. I don't need password. But my bank is bypassing my Android and my iOS uh, innovative biometric stuff to unsecure myself on my device for using their digital application. And this is all the banks in Canada and United States. And okay, Europe. But, but I think we're going off topic a bit here. You're talking uh, about Yes and no, it. because we have to think well, about it. Because well, they say- The they point say of we... this part is, how can we ensure everyone has digital capacity to realize themselves? Okay, so uh, let's- And I don't because I, of the bank. I had to go with a mask and subway signing papers. Just saying. So this is not really agile. This is not even a digital mindset. And it's not at helping me achieving or realize myself as a customer. Uh, I'm not pleased as a customer. I don't know. I don't know but, about the other panelists, but one area I'm seeing a huge area is in uh, in telehealth. Uh, I had to actually make an let's see, make a, uh, uh, an annual appointment with my doctor, and now you're actually having it like a, you know a Zoom. I mean, obviously, at some point, if you have to go get a, a test or something, but a lot of stuff now with financial planners with doctor uh, there's going to be so much tele in front of everything right telework telehealth tele you make <laughs> you make a great point mike but i have a question if i'm going to do a tele uh tele doc as they call it or tele whatever they call it uh and i'm not physically there for a physical examination you know and and all these years they resisted uh having you you know tell your problems over the phone and they wanted to physically see you are they still going to charge the same amount of money are you getting the same quality of health care and and that's no one's talking about that and and i think at some point what what what's the liability if if they do make mistakes because they can't actually see you i, I think we have well, some, i think some the, the, the biggest place that, i think the be biggest honest. place we're seeing that is in the insurance companies right now if yes. you want to get some life insurance, right, go get yourself a million dollar policy. You typically would have to draw blood and, and do a nurse's kind of thing. Now, a lot of the insurance companies, they're actually, they're, they're opting, they're saying, oh, we obviously can't have you go see a nurse or whatever, uh, but you're, they're, they're doing this stuff remotely and via phone interview. Look at right now the, in the educational systems, right? Um, uh, people are paying like you go to Harvard, like, uh, actually just today, uh, uh, all of Ca California, South Car uh, 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 Southern California, the university said everything is going to be online starting in September. Right. So um, uh, 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 you're paying like how many thousands and thousands of dollars to basically take a Zoom course that you can go. There's so many like online services that, that do this. What's that university? The um, uh, um uh, the one in 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 Arizona, Southern uh, Phoenix, Southern Phoenix uh, Southern Arizona State, or something yeah. like that. That the um, it's it's a fully uh, it's all online. So why all of a sudden pay like Harvard, you know, uh, a quarter of a million dollars to take a, an online Zoom class, right? That you can 
you know, uh, <laughs> you can get uh, uh, those. Do you want that paper that says Harvard in her, her resume? That's yeah. it. Yeah, well, it's the so network too. Not okay. the quality of information, so, not classes you have. So uh, I, I teach I teach at McGill uh, in the evenings, right? We teach agile project management. Look, look at us right now. We're let's say uh, having this uh, uh, Zoom conversation. You can't compare that. If we were in the same room, the uh, I, I don't know who mentioned. I think it was John. You mentioned le, uh, in French. We say uh, la qualité de présence, the quality yeah. of presence. being there, of being there, right? And you can't really, you can do your best, have all these kind of interactive ways, but you can't recreate. Uh, and believe me, I know it's going to be the trend. A lot of the stuff is going to be blended learning, right? More online, maybe some in person. Maybe no, they, no, that, don't you see, don't you see a risk of uh, the robotization of our interaction? And because digital transformation for me should be an asset. It should be a plus according to the question, because how do we put more agility and, and digital transformation? How many of you have clients who come to you for agility or agile stuff, but they never introduce you to their um, digital transformation team, for example, as we should work in togetherness for achieving this, because one is an asset. It's another channel of doing something for any client. And the other one, it's a mindset that should help them make the better decision to please those user and customer using this different channel. And uh, there was two key stuff about what the lockdown is showing us or lockdown or the pandemic, whatever, is, is one thing is we realize that even our country, United States and Canada are not equal into the digital infrastructure. And I don't want to go into 5G. No, no, it's not the point, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me 5G going to solve everything in about two years. No, no, it's not the point. The point is, and uh, the tele, uh, tele university or tele stuff, it's there for 10, 15 years. It's nothing new. So that's why it's discouraging at some point because this crisis it, should it, be an accelerator. It is, it, it is. You're right. But now, like, for example, like that guy there, he, he actually, um, oh, I forgot it. He had a... Uh, the guy actually who was the head of this agile, uh, um, this Arizona State University, this kind of online university, I think his name is Michael Crow. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he came up with a, a book many years ago, kind of de designing the new uh, American university, and it was basically like because he basically gave the 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 uh, the step by step how do you make your university completely online because uh, Arizona State University is completely online. A lot of universities are saying ah. Now, nah, come on. Now, all of a sudden, he's like one of the most popular guys because he realizes <laughs> hey, you, you need to have a complete online offering if you're going to want to survive. Okay. Yeah. So, I also think it's going to change the in person classes too because those professors, I mean, I graduated like eight years ago, and there are some of those professors who would just read out of the book or just like do the same class over and over again, and there was no interaction. And that's just not going to cut it anymore because if you're showing up in class now, it's painfully obvious that you could have received that as a video sitting in your bed and not actually have to trudge across campus to see this guy just regurgitate what you could have seen. So I think it's going to change classes. People are going to go for that interaction, for that active learning. And the professors who have been tenured for a super long time and they just read out of the book. I think are going to not be there for too much longer. Yeah, I like you brought that up, Chris, uh, because it's a new environment, right? We need new skills to deal with that. If we're all in person, I would look at your body language, right? Are you crossing your arms when I'm talking or receptive to that with open arms? I don't know right now. So how I get this body language here online is not possible. I have to find another way. Mm -hmm. Right. You have I the face, you have the facial language or the, you could see at some point the attention. And, and you know, when I did, when I do a lot of class and the last two, three years, actually, is not for me, it's nothing new. The, the lockdown didn't change my life that much, except that I don't have any contract in the United States right now because I cannot cross the border. But, but the thing is, <laughs> I'll do it for you, often man. in my class that I have Snowden people. You can, call, you can. <laughs> no, but I call them Snowden people because what you just said, Leandro, you're, you're quite right. But at least as a, as a, a teacher, if I see your face or I see the way you interact, so, and I could send you a private message, could you, are you, do you need something? Like, but 
I have what I call the Snowden uh, student. They do this. They block their camera. That's okay. They don't want to be uh, in. But I mean, at some point now, you you not only you lose the, um, as you said, the body language, but you also lose the official stuff. So there's different tips. But I don't know. Have you noticed, guys, that, okay, we are in lockdown. It's mostly guideline. It's not like in France, Greece, or Spain with the paper stuff and and even my friend in San Francisco, they have to stay home for real, stay home. Here we still have some kind of mobility. But what I discover, I, and by the way, Mike, I went two times in the last two months in downtown to pick up something in my office. Downtown is dead. But the suburb here in La Salle, in the West Island, it's full of people everywhere. So my thing is, if it's those it reinforces uh, John's point before. Sorry? It reinforces John's point before how exactly, but that's, that's, that's where I, I want to go. The thing is, if it's one thing to say, like, oh, uh, Arizona University is fully online, okay, good for you. But uh, people are not going out for school or for work anymore. Let's say this is the future because we're gonna telework and telelearn. But the cycleway, uh, the boats, the parks, uh, everything will be full of people and their free time because, again, they could, maybe not the classes because I, we're not talking about video or class, right? We're talking about live classes. So I don't know, but for me, how, do, how are we being creative with the agile mindset to make sure that the experience and the realization of people, we cannot transfer everything digitally. So what's your thought on this? Because I mean, like at some point, like how do we balance? Like last Thursday when I did the working agreement with people, they said like, we don't mind to telework forever, but we'd like to gather for the planning and the retrospective. At least this was part of their first trial and working agreement. So this is an example. Uh, so how do we manage this? And the digital information, again, I came back to it because you seem to, to avoid it. If we don't have the same infrastructure, even at, 30 kilometers from Montreal. I, we see we lost someone, uh, Will, I don't know for which reason, he was probably plugged in. So so if not everybody is able to actually assist a Zoom classes or a Zoom meeting or e even uh, other application, now we talk about Zoom, but there's several other. So, so the infrastructure for it and how is digital transformation truly helping to have a good human experience as well as building autonomous team. Just like uh, try to mix your mind with uh, how agility again should be a leader into bringing people uh, achieving those things. So, um, uh, you know, when we talk about, we have to transfer the, the notion of business continuity into our homes, first of all. Uh, you know, I've been through hurricanes, I've been through interesting things i've seen earthquakes tornadoes anything you want to put uh we, we've seen it but um you know going back to the 1990s when we were doing digital when we were doing uh telecom circuits and we were talking about redundancy and, and failover and and we heard this story of you know mastercard losing a million dollars a minute or something, uh, some something disgusting like that, and the company had signed uh, that this would never happen. So they ordered two distinct lines from two places, uh, two different companies, and they were careful about redundancy and all that stuff. Well, then one day, a, a train derailment in, in the middle of the United States, Nebraska, somewhere in the middle of nowhere or South Dakota or something, ended up in a fiery accident because it was carrying fuel and there was a fiber cut. Well, both companies, it was like, I won't name the companies, but in that section, they were laying their lines next to the track. So you, you've got 3000 miles of redundancy, except for that, you know, hundred miles of track. And now the disaster happens and you're cut. Hmm. Same thing the, with your the home. Chain, the chain is as strong as its weakest link. right? Yeah. So you have to study your home. You have to understand, is there only one telecom company in my neighborhood? Do I have some wireless capability with another company? Do I have enough bandwidth? If one goes down, can I survive with the other? Unfortunately, we have to start thinking about our home infrastructure and, and this notion of 
oh, my internet went down. It's not, it's not good enough anymore. Uh, it, and and it's, it gets old fast, right? So uh, what, what that might do is that might allow even you know, local governments and stuff and, and might break up these monopolies that come in and you only have one cable provider in one neighborhood. Well, maybe people will start screaming about that and, and that might change too and, and get some quality going because of competition. Uh, so there could be some of that happening too, but we, we all have to vocalize that together as all citizens of every com- country now are at home and they're experiencing these ups and downs. We should call the politicians and say, why is this guy the only monopoly when, when his service stinks? Let's, let's mess them up right now with their own medicine and say, now I'm going to demand a refund. Now I'm going to, because there's a thousand of me, not just one of me that you've ignored forever. And now it's going to hurt you because it's hurting me. That's, that's an agile uh, transference of an awakening that we can all do if exactly. we've seen localized problems like that. Yeah. Anyone else? Because that's a great point, John. This I'll, is exactly I'll, I'll what say, we experience. I'll say, uh, I'll say something that you, I don't know, you probably, you probably know this, uh, Alexandre. Um, you know who Howard Sublet is? Hmm? I think you should, you, Howard Sublet, you should know he's, a, yes. he's the co-CEO of uh, Scrum Alliance. Mm-hmm. So this whole thing, right, about uh, agility and Scrum at, at Stones uh, remotely. And uh, he said something that kind of like, I was like, I didn't understand it at first. Because they were, he was, they were talking about how you know we have to work remotely and we have kind of like these virtual working air environments, and he used a couple of words that I didn't. I was like, why did he say that? He said, when we're working remotely, we have to work with intentionality and commitment. He says, if we want to work, he says we have to do it like not just kind of like uh, it's a night. We have to actually do it with a purpose. So to even go back to what you were talking about, Chris, before. I'm a, I'm a, a, a McGill uh, instructor and I do both uh, online. I, I work with PMI Montreal. We do uh, online training. You literally have to think about, hey, somebody's at home in front of their, in their office. You know, and you have to put yourself in their shoes. It's not just death by PowerPoint, right? And just kind of like reading slides. Every one of you could read. Everybody, it's what are you going to, how are you going to make that experience uh, a great, think about back in transfer your, knowledge you, through your experience actually yeah but but it? but it's just like like before for example you're using pickle right it's a visual aid if this conference or this panel was going to be simply just by drawing stuff you wouldn't get the full value right it's a something that complements and it's a visual aid to what we're trying to get across so for me it's you have to one of the things that like in, in agile we use empathy mapping and all these design thinking techniques and customer centricity all these things now it's going to become even more important because all of a sudden the person's not in front of you and i'm not getting immediate feedback they're in a zoom screen or you're looking at 30 different people at the same time which there's no way you can oh, yes. process all that information right so how do you engage how do you i think about now all these uh, teachers that have to teach at grade one and grade two where the attention span is like 10 seconds how do you actually ca- capture that you know that so i think that's going to be one of the big challenges and, and it's a good challenge because i think it's going to in- improve the quality of the experience even if we go back to face to face like i don't know who said it, uh, i think it was a uh, chris or another that's going to still stay in place like these things are going to become more blended learning styles yeah, I totally agree. And I, I was actually on a great webinar by a guy here in Montreal called, uh, his name's Alistair Kroll. He is one of the founders of Startup Fest. And he, his deck, he maybe went through 10 slides in this hour long presentation, but he had over 40 slides for reference. And so he asked a lot of questions. He would pull uh, people who ask questions and put their video on the screen. And just that made everyone kind of on their game started to pay attention because it's like, shit, I could get pulled onto this webinar in front of 400 people. I'm going to be paying attention. That, that you hit the nail on the head because it, be it even in live or like this, one of the things I tell the people that like, for example, uh, Alexandre as our facilitator for this, we started off, we created a bit of a working agreement. He asked, what are your expectations? One of the things that's expected is, 
you're not just going to sit there and stand and you are expected to actively contribute. That is the difference between a meeting and a workshop. This is a workshop. So when you have, so I don't have any meetings. A meeting for me is like that old status meeting, just distribution of knowledge. Hey, there's a great collaboration tools that allow you to do that. This is a workshop. You are, exp- it's, it's almost like a pop quiz mentality. Hey, it's a brainstorm, uh, it's a brainstorm but you're, act, you're expected to contribute. Yeah. Right? Right. And I think like meetings, it's about conflict resolution. It's about reaching a decision. Everyone has that information ahead of time. So you're not spending time learning, you're spending time deciding, and then you're getting out of the meeting because the shorter it is, the better. And uh, I think, yeah, it's it's about yeah, like- gener- Generate yeah. common knowledge, right? You just bring everybody to the same page, yeah? Like here we were five with five different ideas and I imagine right now we are getting close to one or two common ideas here. Outside of the box. Ba- right? <laughs> I don't know if after two and uh, 40 hours, if you see some outcomes or some, because the, the I think the aim, when I ask you to present yourself and what is your intention tonight? Well, so it was question of intention to have a conversation. Are we <laughs> the dead start? <laughs> has to be outside of the box thinking. Outside of the box thing, yeah. But 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 again, the, these kind of forum that I propose you guys is more like to to actually exchange between us being different different not knowing each other. Of course, Michael is no me and John. Uh, Le- Leandro, I think uh, we kind of virtually met because you were subscriber for the Scrum Beer, the real Scrum Beer, the real yeah. stuff, <laughs> and finally ended up. Uh, contributing but i think uh, do you all feel even chris uh, the uh, owner of the tool that uh, we use for a lot for the first table but not for the second same thing but i mean like do you feel that you will get out of this uh, forum this brainstorm with some new ideas for yourself your client uh, the world as a whole or we just uh, spend time uh, having fun and talking and using tools Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that um, to like come together, share ideas and just like be exposed to other points of view. Um, I think that that is just a valuable activity um, for it all. And like, I would still consider myself pretty new to agile and scrum. So just hearing you guys speak about these methodologies and these different ways, it's certainly impacting me. Um, but yeah, and, and it's all, uh, a learning opportunity. I kind of take things as so. Yeah. It's a, it's a question for you guys. Uh, did you learn something today? Because for me, my best way of learning it's to have conversation. I think, um, uh, it would have been nice to have a couple more people, uh, as well that in retrospect, I could say, you know, we lost a couple. I would have been curious to see what they had to say. Uh, as well, but I, did, I do. Did you think... get any other feedback online, Alexon, to that point? Yeah, but actually, Anna uh, pinged me a couple of times, but I didn't want to break the flow of our conversation. So that's kind of why. I mean, like at some point, um, yeah. So, but actually, I think Benoit, he, he make a final thing. The thing with Facebook, me, I was on Facebook before it was Facebook. Now I'm not on Facebook anymore. My brand is, and I have my uh, now, social media people. That now it's me. fake book, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fake book for sure. But the thing is, I don't understand because there's no more, there's no time. So I don't know when Benoit actually worked to us. I know like um, Anna, my helper, that she's on the Facebook thing. She she pinged me uh, probably an hour ago. So, so we're kind of late on this. So I apologize for anyone who's still listening because there's still about uh, 10 people on Facebook. Uh, so Benoit, here's a question. So now that's done. But that's kind of lame, no? There's no time. Anyways, continue, John, with a little bit of your yeah. retro. Continue, Riza, because yeah, I'm... yeah. So I, I think it was in times when you're kind of a, in, in the house and everything. And I know a, a lot of you are still working, but for me specifically, uh, to re-engage with uh, peers and and even though I haven't been, you know, physically working for a company for about six weeks now uh, it, it was good it was brain stimulating and all of that it's good to feel that i'm i'm in touch and and we're sharing opinions just like the old days 
So to me, that that that's a big thing that I got, uh, you know, that that was useful to me, just even having this presence. But, uh, you know, it, it even stimulates my brain more because what I've been busy with, to be honest, is uh, reinventing my own self by, you know, going digital anyway. I've, I've been preparing night and day feverishly, you know, my own brand of training that I'm going to put online. And I actually have the first course in beta mode. A couple of peers are looking at it. What's that? What's that expression, John? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yes, yes. Or the accelerator in this case, because I was I was already working this, you know, behind the scenes slowly. Now I went into over overdrive because I have the time. So uh, it became opportunistic. But but certainly, uh, yeah, I, I I definitely appreciate this this forum because. I've stepped away from my zone and now I'm with people too. Like it's, it's, it's important to do that. Um, and, uh, and if I may, I'm going to send you uh, because uh, I just want to stay with you guys till the end. Yeah. But John, I got your email. I'm going to send you something because in the business agility Institute, uh, I don't know if you saw it, Michael, but uh, we, we create a database on a Google uh, drive mm -hmm. where you could find jobs all around the world, remote and physical actually. But when I say jobs, even like as a consultant, so maybe, I will send it to you because you could see if you could um, actually offer your services because this is what we create as a community of business yep. agility. Uh, so uh, it's really, um, because for you, Leandro, you're still working, right? Yeah, I'm still working. Actually, I started a new job uh, one week before the confinement. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So nice. when, when I present myself in the company, I say, yeah, I'm new to the car, but I'm enough to to know the office. <laughs> Amazing, man! It's like these uh, these guys, Mike. I don't know if you saw them. They opened their pizzeria, and and complete lockdown. So they have the the oh, place, wow. but they just do delivery and, and so. But still, they this is what I call an entrepreneur type of thing, Leandro. Yeah. I mean, like yes. we open, we open March 27, whatever. What and they they they're doing good business. You know, no, it's only I, delivery I, I and take out. I mentioned now. my father's philosophy. One of the things we say is, if you don't have your health, you have nothing, right? Yep. Exactly. So, you know, uh, when I reached out to John, asked him that he has so much experience, and I'm so glad he shared so much of his knowledge. You know, but one of the great things of this is a bit of réseautage, right? A bit of yes. the networking, the people online. This is going to get recorded. Other people are going to hopefully hear and see this. And yeah, you know, if, if you agree, I will leave it there. Because that was a question and, uh, and yeah. the people will be there. And I will also, I forget to record it. I'm sorry. But I will I will go back to my <laughs> Facebook and I'll retrieve it. And if you'd like, I will cut it a little bit. And I will send it to you through uh, Dropbox anyway. So okay. you'll be able to watch yourself again and to maybe cut it, Michael, to uh, promote PMC. I don't know. Yeah, but where, where <laughs> yeah. will you cut it? Here? Or I don't, I don't need this to promote PMC, right? <laughs> sure. No, no, no. When if I say cut, if Benoit, I, if Benoit is watching, if I have to promote PMC, I'll uh, here yeah, I'll, with the cloud city. Yeah, you, are I'll, you doing cloud uh, transformation? Oh, you have it. You know, <laughs> nice. Or here, but I'll, uh, I'll no, but uh, really, um, here, really. So that will PMC. be part of the follow up to send you the the raw footage and you do whatever you want because, as I said, it's uh, it's open source. So whatever you could replay it and have ideas to develop something. It's, it's yours, it's ours. Uh, and me, I'm just like, uh, like I created a scrum beer in Montreal inspired by people in Brazil, actually. Uh, and of course, England, because uh, actually that was a good joke from my client in London. They say like, uh, because apparently uh, Boris Johnson want to continue to lock down through the summer. And they said, and the, the pub are closed for now about six weeks. So I um, have a question and maybe we can propagate it and do something agile. And we talk about incentives, right? Mm. And, and having skin in the game. But I keep hearing about all these politicians. I want to see the politicians give the example and say, yeah, I've given an order that has put a lot of people out of work. So myself and the entire government, the cabinet, you know, the people that the lawmakers will also not take any money, no pay, so <laughs> that they have equal incentive to do this fairly. But as yeah, long good, as you're getting good, paid, there's no incentive, luck with that, right? So like let, let's spread that word, right? As a magical thing. But, it, but you know, Trudeau here will say like, oh, but I'm giving you $2,000 a month. Well, oh, he I'm might. giving you this and I'm giving you that. And he, he might. But in, in the U.S., when you have an, when you're an independent on. LLC, you don't quite qualify for unemployment. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you have, you, you're still considered self-employed, even if you don't have work. 
So, uh, but even us, of, even, even today, loopholes, right? we've talked a lot about yeah. us as consultants. One of the things we haven't even talked talk about, how, like you think about students, think about mm. all the summer jobs that are, yep. think about like here here in Canada, we have like, I think uh, about 400,000 uh, unemployed students that are going to get out there. And yes, even like, you know, we've talked about government subsidies. It's the experience. Right? All of that is being lost right now. Yep. Think of uh, all these graduation things. That are, I mean, yep. There's so much, anyways. Uh, we can talk. Actu and actually, talk. actually, just to give you a little glimpse of one of my other work, who is not agile, with helping the law firms. The law firms I was sitting on this morning, there were like two psychologists, uh, two microbiologists, and mm. a couple of lawyers, of course, and one constitutionalist. Okay, and my guys, I'm telling you. I was there actually to put some agility into it and helping visualize the 3,000 cases that's coming here in Quebec. Okay, lawsuit, uh -huh. collective lawsuit, and individual lawsuit. Nice. It goes about this. So even if they don't um, stop paying themselves, the politician. Let me tell you, on a Quebec perspective, the, the suing, the uh, request for um, how could I translate it? Help me, Michael. Uh, the, the états généraux or the commission d'enquête. Or... Yeah, well, no, but in general, it's a lot. You actually yeah. mentioned this before, John, mm -hmm. and and actually, it's happening a lot down in the states right now. For example, the Senate is looking in the U.S. to to come up with a new bill, right, so to give more money to the the local governments and stuff like that. And one of the things, what one of the things that's holding it up, or one of the things they want in there, is some um, protection yeah. that. If an employee comes back to work and gets sick, the government can't get sued. It falls on the employer. So one of the things they're trying to implement is if you take this money to kind of help and to pay, you also accept the liability of any uh, legal so this is like it's incredible I mean I, I, again we I can I'm so you can get so much into this I just want to say I just want to say one thing though first of all thank you to Alexandre for the invite to be part of this and yes, thank sir. you to all the panelists and to Anna I, I, the, the openness the transparency that you guys have shown it's really it's agility uh, uh, at its purest form so I want to personally thank you uh, and and to answer your question, Alexander, I've got, I love, I've, I've literally written down some notes on some of the key things, like some takeaways that I'm going to be applying. And hopefully you guys uh, have done the same. So I want to thank you very much because uh, it's been, uh, it's been really cool. And I guess I've got to, uh, and I got to thank these guys here, you know, for, uh, for, uh, for allowing me the time to do it too. So. Yeah, of course. And I'm really glad. And I would like to thank Chris also from Pickles. Uh, I hope one day we're going to really use it more to show the capability of that tool, especially as, as I said, and this is why I try to uh, to show this Pickles application to Scrum people and Agile people, because I don't think, Chris, you develop it necessarily for the Agile world. Is that right? Yeah. But me, when, he, when we meet together from a, a Beedle, actually, it's a Beedle network, uh, and... Um, I saw a lot of opportunity, uh, Michael, uh, John, and Leandro, especially for retrospective as a scrum master mindset, let's say, but even for your product owner uh, to create value streams and uh, what have you. What I really appreciate about that is while we were, especially at the beginning, when we were talking, how you were getting stuff from people on Facebook or online. I think that is because, like, actually, I found like for us, we're engaging. And so it's not, a, but I find it more, it's like for the people that are more observing, that's awesome to see like their comments or what their interactions yeah. are. Like when Anna all of a sudden talked about, you know, the, the, that organic learning, oh, what did you mean by that? And so it allowed for that. Uh, it promoted yeah. that exchange. So, and this yeah. is not just for remote team. Of course, it's a great tool for remote team. But you could actually, I think, Chris uh, is also using it with people in the same room. I think, right? And uh, so, so yes, in the same room. Yeah, I, I had never seen it before, and, and it looked uh, fun. I would say yeah. so. Yeah, I don't. You know, I've seen other stuff, but th this one. Yeah. was definitely different. I, I was afraid to use it because I might use too much of my bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that bad in the West Island? Oh, I don't know. That's bad. Don't worry about it. It's not West Island. And Leandro, but, uh, nice to uh, meet you. And hopefully uh, Scrum Beer number 10 will be at the brewery. I know I'm in touch with those guys. They are really innovator. Actually, if you are in Montreal, I encourage you. They open every Thursday at 4 o'clock, Chris. 
Yeah. You could go do a pickup of beer there. And they did a beer, uh, Ça va bien aller. And all the money goes yeah. to uh, the kids and mental health and stuff like this. So even if they struggle, they give money away from a beer they create for the COVID. And this brewery, they support me. They are entrepreneurs as well. And they actually, they make their beer the scrum way. I'm not kidding. Okay. That's they have a scrum board and stuff like this. And these guys are young, are motivated. And when I ask them, could I be here for doing my scrum beer? And, and Michael Darnalas or uh, Keegan Green, if you're listening, I love you guys. Thank you very much for being there. We won't let you down. I'm going tomorrow to pick up some of your great beer. And we'll be back to do a scrum beer and together an S. And John, if you come in Montreal. Yeah, it's, 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 fun enough. it's almost. Thank you. I, I think you. we should. I think, uh, John, we should meet up at, the, at, the, at that beach that's behind you there. That uh, <laughs> that shipwreck <laughs> beach there in in, in, in Zante and Zakinto in Greece. That's when, when things the, open up. <laughs> when the planes start flying, you know where I'll be, right? And I don't know for you. you guys, but me, I've got three credits right now. I have like three flights to re retake. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have three little ones and, and three credits, uh, three small flights and a, a conference that was canceled and they kept the money. And, and uh, huh. I got, I've got to deal with that too. But uh, anyway, so the. Just a my, quick note. Someone on Facebook wrote yes. us uh, uh, before I leave. I really want to let you know that this is very, very interesting discussion you guys have. And uh, you guys did a great job. Thank you so much for the inspiration. So here you have it. Uh, right. And Benoit, you just talked about uh, we should uh, do a zero close test or something. I don't know exactly, but this is probably when we were talking about uh, the more medical aspect of COVID. So he said, like, we need body implemented COVID tests. It's scary. I don't know, I don't know Benoit that much. I didn't know he was... Uh, and to implementing something into us, but uh, I, I leave you uh, to talk to him, Michael. Self-organizing, right? <laughs> um, so, Alexandre, how are you going to do that demo of the beer? The you demo know? of the beer? Yeah, you said they're doing it agile at that brewery. So, um, how do they do the demos? <laughs> you know what? That could be the the team uh, the team of the next uh, Scrum beer when we gather together. Actually, it's yeah. been often the the owner of the place. Uh, one Scrum beer I did. If people were coming between 4.30 and 5.30, they were, they were allowed into the, uh, the shop uh, where they, they brew the beer and they will show us uh, the visual board and how they do this. Uh, all the chemistry is working multifunctionally with, uh, that was kind of nice. They have a Scrum way, uh, mm -hmm. very adapted because Scrum actually, you know, and uh, I don't want to brag about it, but I learned from the great masters and they told me that Scrum is, why did they, write the guide uh, in 2014 as it's been in use since 1986 or 1993, uh, according to who we'd like to believe. The thing is, it's because it's completely customizable. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I did I did Scrum into a kitten garden here in La Salle. Not to manage the kids, by the way, but to manage the work collaboration of the uh, intervention. So, so not, Scrum me, I did beer, Scrum right? like, huh? Not with beer, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, gone. No, gone. but I mean like, Comments made by John do not reflect the opinions of other Greek members on this panel. <laughs> Chris, you want to say? Oh, yeah, no, I was just going to say they take the hop, they take the yeast, they take some water, and they just put it in their mouth. So it, wrap, it's, eat that. It, and uh, oh, that was good. That was bad. So they rapid prototyping that way. So, my, Michael, you know, the reason I'm joking like this is Michael knows that. I, I, you know, my grandparents were farmers in Greece, so I grew up participating in the winemaking process since the oh. age of two. Like I was stomping grapes at two. So, wow. you know, that I have, I have other memories of my childhood. That's why he's laughing. He knows. <laughs> John's, John's feet were purple for the first five years of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Leandro, yes. something to add, to complete? Um, I would like to, uh, to really thank you all, you guys, for, for this discussion. I think I learned a lot. Uh, 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 we live here with a lot of thoughts and a lot of things to think about, right? It really sparked a lot of curiosity in my mind at this point. And yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward for the next one. Compared to online. You mean the next one uh, virtually or uh, in real? Any one of them. And for the uh, for Regine, I have an interesting yeah. story about them. The yeah. first time I went there was for an interview 
for a scrum master position. Really? <laughs> really. Because you work in the Lord Leg building next or? No, no. Uh, I, well, actually, the company was doing um, a happy hour there and they said, okay, can you come and just join us there? Then you talk with, well, you're going to have the interview of two people right there. So why not? Yeah. But it's interesting to know that they use Scrum there. Then after the Scrum, we're in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. They have something close in there. Maybe the Scrum uh, well, thank, stone is there. Yeah. It's well, point thank you, thank you very much. Muito obrigado. That's what we have to say. Right? Thank you, <laughs> so thank you guys. I'm going to so have to get you all going Thank you, Alex Caristos. Well. Alex the Greek uh, uh, panelists. Hey, <laughs> <the pool. laughs> and uh, thank you and, again. And uh, uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Uh, you're all now a subscriber of my mailing list, I'm assuming. I don't know. So, yeah, you're flying in the sky. Uh, so, um, thank you so much for your participation. I hope uh, we learned something together and we have takes away. And uh, have a good evening. Yes. And uh, see you soon. Stay Be healthy, well. guys. Stay healthy. Merci. A bientôt et à l'autre côté, right? Yes, there you go. On the other side. Okay. See you, John. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Thank you.